It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy Anakos here, and it's a rare sighting of Alex Lindsay. We're going to talk about the latest Mac news, including iPhone 5 rumors and that big lawsuit. Looks like Apple is stopping the Galaxy Nexus in the U.S. Details to come next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 306, recorded July 3rd, 2012. Blue Collar Bob. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Hover.com. Hover is domain name registration and management that's simple. For 10% off your new domain, visit macbreak.hover.com and use the offer code MACBREAK. And by audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash MacBreak. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show that uh, polishes the apple, so to speak. Here he is, number one apple polisher. I don't know who to say. Number, which of you is number one Apple polisher? Alex? Andy? Leo? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Andy, because as a professionally trained journalist, would want that mantle. Exactly. I'm, I'm independent. I am un unaffiliated. I don't want my own personal purchases to impinge in any way the perception of my <laughs> fair journalistic sense of balance. On the other hand, he does love squirrels, apparently. Yeah, it's not a squirrel. It's a groundhog. Oh, he loves groundhogs like squirrels love nuts. Oh. It's, it's, it's one of the it's one of these staff backyard groundhogs. The 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 senior staff, uh, this uh, groundhog. There's also a junior groundhog and one that is probably pushing retirement age. I was very very glad to see him That's two months ago because that meant that he had actually survived the winter, which now, I didn't do, think he was going to. Do. Do, you, do you uh, uh, do you think of them as your minions? No, again, they're just they're they're staff. Okay, okay. They, they 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 tend the grounds. I I, I don't oh, really have to spend much time staff. in the yard yeah. because if there's anything edible in there, they will have already eaten it. So I don't have to. Whenever I need a snack, I know I can pretty much keep it to the kitchen because there's not going to be anything in the backyard. You took a lovely picture I saw uh, yesterday after the thunderstorms of a wet mm -hmm. rabbit in your backyard. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was. Uh, <laughs> have it. Yeah, here it is. I love that picture. You're just standing there. Yeah, that's what that Sony telephoto you're reviewing right now. That's yeah, pretty good. I'm, 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 it's been delayed a couple times. This is like the new uh, uh, NEX F3, and Sony Ooh, sent nice. that really cool, like immensely ridiculous, <laughs> like huge lens on a tiny body with it. Uh, but the, the but the cool thing about both those photos is that like I'm taking them through screen doors. So there's a reason, like you know how like Barbara Streisand is really vain or about her, about her appearance, and every time she directs herself in a movie, like there's always this layer of like black mesh or cheesecloth in front of the lens to make her look like more ethereal. Yeah. So basically, that 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 bunny and that groundhog are both getting the Barbara Streisand like ethereal screen <laughs> shot. We like to call that promist. Just throw a yes. little promist on there. Andy Inako from the Chicago Sun Times is yes. here. Alex Lindsay, oddly enough, is in town from Crazy, the Pixel <laughs> He's here, I, you know, like once in a while nowadays because he's working so busy on it. working. I'm he's working. got a good job. I'm not knocking it. You got a business. You're running it. It's but I we're thrilled when you're here. It's nice. I love being here. I'm sorry. I want to thank Rick. We have a couple of people to to uh, talk about today. One, Sean Montgomery, who is watching us at the beach on his phone and sent us this picture. Curse you, Sean Montgomery. Looks like a nice day. It looks like a Corona ad where Sean is. I think, I think everybody should start sending us photos of where they are while they're listening to our show. Yeah, and we'll show that. And then, and then Rick Windlinks it, it was uh, fishing in Oregon and took, I think, a very lovely photo of a, a sunset. But look, look, a little, look a little closer. Do you notice anything about that, that sun? Does it, look, does it look a little bit like an <laughs> apple? No. <laughs> That's, I don't know, Rick. I, 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 you see, must... Did you get chills you, when you... If you put the headpiece to the staff of Jobs in the right place in the map room, <laughs> the glowing apple will tell you where the iPhone 5 is hidden. <laughs> it's actually the source of all of their innovations. Actually, this just in. Apple is now suing the sun for stealing its trade design. That's a, that is an amazing picture, Rick. Thank you for sending it to me. I love the steam coming off the yeah, water, too. It's gorgeous. Wow. 
Anyway, so picture time is over, but we just thought. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dwayne Ignite in the chat room says, thank you for being a nerd, Andy. <laughs> You know, it's it's. <laughs> I, I was I was listening to the Judge John Hodgman podcast, and he made a really nicely uh, nerdy Iron Man reference, and without even missing a beat, I'm thinking, oh, was that that must have been from the Bob Layton David Michelini era of Iron oh. Man, like the storyline. I don't remember the story arc he's referring, but I believe it was a Bob Layton issue. Oh, yeah, it's it's reflex. <laughs> you guys is nerds. No, we that we love our nerds. That's what uh, this whole channel is built for. Nerds. <laughs> You might as well, we could just, instead of Twitter, we should call it nerds. Like, why didn't I do that? We could come up with some retronym. That's where you have an acronym and you go backwards and you give it a meaning. A yes. retronym. Yes, we could do that. Nerds. Chat room, work on it. Angry nerds. Angry nerds. <laughs> <laughs> there is a game right there, right? There is a candy. We'd have to spell it differently. <laughs> Angry yeah. nerds. Angry nerds. Yeah. So uh, Apple has this. Now, I. I uh, was a little head up over this, but I'm going to give you guys a chance to defend Apple over this. A California district judge uh, on Friday granted Apple an injunction against the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. This is the most recent ga uh, Google Experience phone, which makes it significant, by the way. It is not, it, and I'm sure this is why Apple picked this as a target. It is not modified in any way by carriers. This is the Google Experience or by uh, manufacturers. It's also the first phone running ice cream sandwich. The judge found that it likely infringes on all four patents cited by Cupertino. Uh, and and uh, But the judge specifically uh, singled out uh, 604, which is called the Siri patent. There was slide to unlock, uh, what Florian Mueller calls data tapping, and I still don't understand what it does. And uh, basically autocorrect uh, where it suggests yeah. responses. But the but Judge Coe said the one she was most convinced by is the is the patent that says when you do a search, go out, look at a lot of different sources and put the results back into a single unified page for the user. They, that's the Siri patent. And of course... Uh, I, I don't know exactly. I haven't looked at the complaint, but exactly where in the Nexus phone they're talking about. But I would guess it's the Google Voice search feature, which is very much like Siri, where you'll search for something, and I presume it brings back Yelp and location and mm. other stuff. What do you think, Andy? This is this is all pretty gross. Uh, when you look at the actual patents that are being actioned on, they're so broad that half of two of these things, I can tell you that I've actually written in code myself as and any time in the past twenty years because they're just that basic. Uh, if they're the uh, the, uh, the the thing that you're confused about is something that I think on Apple it's actually called data detectors. This the, is the, the ta data tapping thing. Data tapping. It's it's essentially the idea that if someone sends you an email that says, oh, that's cool, I'll be in town. If you oh. need to get in touch with me, here's my phone number. Got that's it. the ability to Click detect that, that a sequence. Right. Yeah. That's the to, to turn that into a, you tap that and it turns into uh, into an actual uh, a, a right. voice call. Okay. But I mean, is th is that really so complicated that it is Apple's sole property? The, the patent for Siri. Now, what, when I the, the first time that I, I, I was uh, I was looking at uh, these problems. Uh, I'm trying to activate it here. Here is here is like the Samsung Galaxy 3 version of Siri, and as you can see, it looks almost identical. Yeah, this is, really isn't that is part of the problem? No, well, well, no, the, no, no the that's not what is, the patent is. Not the, the problem the is look. the patent. The patent is yeah. See here it is. <laughs> as I was talking, it's I'm sorry, I don't understand <laughs> what is the real deep. Do you want to search the web? It is really exactly like Siri, but that's not the that's not the nature of their complaint. The nature of their complaint is that. The the transmogrification of the phrase "What's the weather like out there?" to a search of a weather page uh, on the internet, and then a search a search of God dang it, <laughs> Siri. Here I could do it here. Let me try. Let me try. I don't know. No, I Chad, do you have an over the shoulder for me? No, uh, no. It's, uh, it's what's the, the, the nature, weather like the nature, out there? I'm just the curious nature of the happen. Unfortunately, I put I I placed the phone down on the. <laughs> On the on the MacBook that I use, like to control the chat, and so it's ooh, I see a magnet. I bet the lid is closed. I'm gonna try to go into sleep now. More Apple innovation. Why don't they try to legislate I that? I see out? a magnet. So it did. So, I just so, did so, that so though. I said, "What's the weather out there?" And uh, this is the Samsung version. This is not Google right. Voice. This is a Samsung version. Now the right. Nexus does something similar with ice cream sandwich, and then it gave me the weather for a very nice presentation. Yeah, 
Uh oh, you've muted now. I don't know what magnet you've got there, but you've now muted yourself. No, no, no I'm taking it off now. Okay, am I, am I good now? There you go. Sorry about that. Um, I hate it I when that to, happens. You know, I you got everything set effect. up just right, and then. I, the, the, the next time, I'm actually a few weeks away from like actually. Uh, it's been like a, a couple of years since I set up the studio. I'm now a few weeks away from truly like moving everything out and rebuilding everything like so it makes sense now. And I think that just told me that I'm gonna have to put like something over this keyboard to keep myself <laughs> from doing that. Um, but to, to, get, to get to back to get back to the point, their patent on on that they're using for this is just the idea of saying what's the weather and turning that into a search result specifically for weather that returns search results. And that's another thing that anybody could tell you that they've written code like that in the past 20 25 years it's just absolutely silly and it's just so broad that believe it or not i mean apple also tried to get injunction against this uh, this galaxy 3 a uh, galaxy s3 from from samsung uh and the reason why the judge turned that down wasn't because uh it was only because that apple had asked made so many requests of that judge that she just didn't have time uh, on, on her docket for it so right now this is a very popular phone that a lot of people are very very happy with and are saying that uh, myself including that this is pretty much as good as an iphone it's just different strengths and different weaknesses this would not be on the market if not for the fact that uh, there just wasn't time in order for, for Apple to block it. And it just makes, it just gets me really disappointed because I was thinking about this this morning that this is not the act of a greater nation. This is the act of a lesser nation. This is the act of a nation, uh, of a society in decline. I'm not saying that this is a sign that Apple's going down. I'm not predicting Apple's going down. I'm simply saying that when you look at the things that make you think that a company has it all together, suing other companies into not making competing products based on what appear to be very flimsy excuses is not that thing. Uh, and I, I had to come back to, uh, I'll cut myself off after this, because this, this is clearly a two hour rant. And I don't want that to happen. But I, I, I had to keep thinking about uh, what Louis C.K., the comedian, uh, would say uh, a couple of years ago when so many people were trying to claim that, oh, well, this comedian is stealing Louis, Louis C.K.'s bit. Here's another comedian that's, that's stealing another one of his bits. And he wasn't pleased that other comedians might have been using his material, but his larger attitude is that, well, by the time they steal the bit that I was I worked on two years ago and performed on DVD last year, I've developed another two years' worth of material, so it doesn't really bother me or affect me all that much. I mean, if someone does a complete knockoff of Siri the way that this uh, Samsung Galaxy 3 did, I think that's an issue. But, man, if you're going to say that you're not allowed to have to, to pop out a, a, a phone number from an email and turn that into a phone call, and that's the reason why you're going to deny a very cool, useful alternative device to an entire market, that's just not, that's not something that Apple should be proud of. And that's not something that any Apple user should be proud of either. You know, just to use your analogy the, of the comic, it almost feels... I can understand why a comic would sue if the joke were told by someone else as his own. But it's almost as if a comic said, I patent all airline peanut jokes. You cannot make <laughs> jokes about airline peanuts. It's it's a much no, it, broader thing than... A, than and it strikes me as being overly broad. Now, I should it, mention that uh, Samsung has requested a stay... So uh, this, you know, this is still in process. The the injunction, which would prevent sales of Galaxy Nexus phones in the U.S., requires a couple of things. Apple has to post a ninety-six million dollar bond in case the injunction uh, was inappropriate and there's damages to Samsung. This is to protect Samsung. Samsung has appealed in, uh, or actually requested a stay, and uh, so until the stay has been ruled upon, Apple is not going to put up the bond. So it's. In other words, you could still buy a Nexus phone. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just just to give you an update on what's going on uh, right now. What do you think, Alex? Well, I, I think that um, a few things. I mean, I think that the fundamental problem is the patent office. So the, you know, so well, I, we I think know, that, we so, all but, know but, but, the but, patents but, are broken. But the thing is, is that is that the way it's set up right now is that if you do not patent uh, everything that you're doing, some troll is going to come and sue you for it. And if you do not patent it and adjudicate, I mean, if you not, don't take it to court, if you don't take to court everyone who's, you will lose the access to is that, that patent. Is that the case? You know, I, that I, is, I believe. You, it's a, I know it's a case with trademark. I don't know if it's a case with patent. I, I do believe that you have to continue to, to, um, to we have that, attorneys but, in the chat room. If you could yeah, fill you, us in on that. But I believe that they have to go down that path. Beyond that, I think that, I think that Google very much underestimated, I think a, how, how close Steve was to like really being excited about working with Google and how upset he was when 
<laughs> when they when they released something that was directly competitive to something that to, to what he was really like everything that he was about you know and the, and the issue is is that is that this is you know this argument is not it's not a business argument it is a um uh the the issue that you get into is this is personal you know and i think it's going to remain personal and i think that I think that I think Apple is going to continue to go down this path. Um, I don't. I don't think it's a business decision. I don't think it's trying to make more money. I think it, it literally is. Um, uh, you know, they were crossed, and I think that they, Apple may slowly tie away. But this is all legacy stuff from when Steve was upset, and I don't think Apple's just going to drop all of that all all of a sudden. Um, I do think that uh, the, one of the things that Apple I think has a complaint about whether you know there's all these little technical things that are going on, but overall what you're looking at is Samsung releasing phones that many pieces of them look exactly like what Apple's doing. So Apple comes out with something in there and they really do look just like that. And it's like, yeah, we can give you, we, you know, we can't give you an iPhone, but we can give you something that is almost as good as an iPhone. And it does feel like mm -hmm. a lot of these phones feel like a lot of the features that they're talking about feel like, well, you know, we're getting something almost as good. You know, it's, it's something Actually, like I think an iPhone. The, I think that one, I don't, I would, I might ascribe, and I don't know. And I, you know, I think it's completely possible that you could say Apple is doing what they have to do, as you say, to protect their patent. Uh, and you could even make the case, well, Apple is right that this is an infringement. I think you could also make the case that this phone, this is not the Galaxy Nexus, this is actually a better phone, the S3, that's the one you have too, Andy, is superior in almost every respect to the iPhone. I mean, I certainly feel that I way. Would, I, don't, I don't carry I, I an wouldn't, iPhone. I, I, I wouldn't call it superior. I would say that it's just as good, just in different ways. Well, I mean, we won't get into that. But yeah, we don't need to debate it. I'm just, my point is, some might yeah, say it's but, superior. I do. Some might say it's almost, it's as good or equal. Some might not like it. But I right. think that what's happened is, and this is going, this is already selling uh, quite well, is that um, you could also, I'm not saying this, but you could make the case that Apple's starting to be nervous about the competition posed by Google and Android phones. Well, and, I, and that's I, why they're pursuing well, this. Well, I, I definitely think that they're, I, I, I do believe that it, it is in Apple's DNA to worry about someone else coming in with another operating system and taking something that they had very popular. I mean, that is their history. Apple's history is that they, you know, they created a system, it was copied. <laughs> essentially, no, well, and then run over them. You know, you know, and and that happened, you know, before. And they're not going to. I think that they're not going to give any. I they're going to take. They're going to take full really, advantage really, of, the, I, of their legal I, recourse. I, I really do want to confront one thing. I don't believe that in any way this is a copy of an iPhone. It's has exactly I mean, it has, my point. It has, it has it has so many features that are unique to this device. This is why I, I keep saying that it's as good as an iPhone, but it has different strengths. There's probably Siri. I think I, I have to I have to call this Siri. I think Siri is the only thing I can see on this device which I can say, yeah, that was copied from the right, iPhone. And, that is a but that's, deal. And, that, and the judge agrees with you. Else, everything else, I think, <laughs> you, everything else I think is unique to this device. This is not a copy of the iPhone. But, but the judge agrees with you. That's exactly what the judge said. Is that is that Siri is a copy of what what already exists there, and so that's the well, that's the issue. That's what got them into trouble. Well, they could have just walked that, away that, from that. That wasn't, right. that wasn't that wasn't the issue because they didn't say that the the version of voice command search that was articulated on this device is is the point of contention. It they was did. the it is, concept right. of. No, I'm saying I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm speaking specifically of the this mechanism case. by which it works, the way that the way that it works on this yeah. specific device, the way it looks on this specific device, which was clearly copied. I mean, it was mm -hmm. it, it, it. You could easily glance at this phone with the voice command in operation and think that you're looking at an iPhone. So I think not, my point is there's certain um, sensible ways to do this that somebody even in a vacuum. Would, for instance, you're making a touchscreen phone, would make it, the screen be this aspect ratio, even in a vacuum. Now, you might argue this would put a button here. Now, this is a lot like an iPhone with a button there. Uh, and I understand, well, this is not the phone that's being litigated. It's the Nexus. Right. Um, but, uh, we, we, but one thing we have to remember, I, just, though, I think that there is a point to be made. It's like Apple uh, patenting rounded rectangles, that which they haven't. Yeah. But that also, there is a certain also, sensible kind of almost... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Aristotelian, but I think, Socratic I think that, uh, 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 perfection, and Apple is in effect saying we're going to do it this way. Remember, this happened with the iPad. They said, "Well, we you can own, make an iPad as long as it's not this. Yeah. It looks we, like we this." Own, but that's the, the okay, but we own that's the, the Platonic the ideal of okay, iPad. But, but, but one, one thing we have to remember: tablet. one thing we have to remember is no phone existed like that until the iPhone came out. No, so that's, this, not that's not true. Samsung no, even had true. a phone exactly the same, but they had keyboards. Also, didn't for, they had flip out keyboards. 
No, for okay, all, I, also remember, for, I don't remember seeing a year, phone like that. For years before that, there were Palm devices that looked like that. There were Windows uh, Windows uh, uh, Pocket PC devices that looked exactly like that. There, the they Apple just didn't did work. not invent the concept. They just weren't popular because they didn't. Color screen. They, they just didn't really color screen with no buttons underneath. They it. just didn't really work. I guess that was the problem before. No, no, they were they were really popular. Palm was Palm Palm was a huge, huge, oh, huge. Leo's Leo's going to show me up here. Again, I I can I can go into my, I, yeah, um, I, I was almost about to go into my own my ACI office phone. like two doors down and grab a couple of different devices so, but, from there. But so what I'll say is that yeah, this is starting to go that direction. Just lots of little buttons all over. The idea is moving everything to the screen except for one you know one singular piece. Yeah, you, know, that, you could approve, much you can improve on this, but you cannot say that Apple invented the touch screen with an on-screen keyboard with a home button. No, no, we we I admittedly those, I mean, I these a, are not these are not physical it. on Samsung's phone. But they are there, these back button and the home button. Uh, right, and we, had, and we had the Newton and we had a lot of other things. I mean, This the, is the, a Palm, I should mention for those not watching, this is Palm. a Palm so cute. Uh, Life drive. It was a five megabyte hard drive in here. I can't charge it because I can't fit it a proprietary charger. I think I have that proprietary charger. If you can find it, I would be very I think it's happy. it's the same as the Trio. Uh, but this predates the iPhone by a good number of years. I mean, this is not, uh, so. But I, I guess just, I would say that everything was so clunky gosh, before. I mean, I, I had it. I, there it is. I admit, I admit Apple has done it better and more beautifully. Right. That so, doesn't but, but, give but you that, rights for then on that only Apple can make no. such a thing. No, I, 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 I don't. I, I, I think that the... I think that the issue, though, is when people have these complaints about all of these things, you know, we should be really thinking about how to rebuild the entire way that we look at pet the patents. I agree. Because it, is, it is completely broken. There is no, I don't think there's you know, anybody is, in the world who thinks that software patents make any sense. And I think we understand this needs to change. But that's where, I mean, that's where this, the, the fundamental issue that we're going to run into over so and over again. you can't blame Apple because they're just doing what the law says you have to do. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, I, I'm saying that, that I think the reason Apple's doing this, and I have to admit, I'm not one that particularly. So hey, Google, I, by the way, Google's doing this in the opposite direction. You understand? No, I, Motorola has gone after Apple. So I mean, th this well, this I mean, goes both ways. It goes both so ways. In that sense, you're absolutely right. This is all the, this, this battling. Is, all this battling and billions of dollars being spent and us being jerked around is because our entire patent system is broken. Our entire copyright system is broken. I want to go. It, I want to go Rodney problem. King on this and just say, let's get along and each of you make the best thing you can and let the market decide. This is an election year. We need to be but, thinking about we need to be thinking about who our representatives are that, that have have a brain. You know, when it comes to dealing with this, because most of them are bought by um, by the copyright holders and by the people who want to keep the status quo and want to keep you know having these pieces. And so, you know, you want to be if you're if you really want this to change, you're not going to change it by complaining to Apple. You're not going to change it by boycotting the iPhone. You're not going to change it by doing those things. You're going to change it by voting in people who are going to allow this to be moved forward, you know, move the conversation forward. It won't happen in one election, but that's the only way any of this is going to change. And, and I think that, you know, I, I think that Apple I, I, I definitely think that Apple is doing this again because, you know, they saw Google as a partner. They, they felt like they were wronged, mm. you know, and I have to admit that. Um, so some of this is spite, or, oh, yeah. and some of it is legitimate. Yeah, and, I, and the thing is, is that I have to admit that my personality is mostly that I'm I'm very very loyal until until I get turned upside down, and then I'm not so loyal. What and so the thing say? is, if I had the money, if I had the money, and someone did what Google did, I, I can't say that I wouldn't say, well, we're just going to keep our lawyers on it. We'll just see how it goes. You know, <laughs> you know, like you know, like I have to admit that my personality would be very similar. So I understand the situation. Is if I felt like I had built this partnership, I had put their apps in my in my in my you know I had put their apps into my phone. I had put their search into my phone. I had done all these things to promote them. I had pushed all those things forward, and then they created their own phone. I'd be upset, you know, and and, and I'd probably if I had the money, I just turn you know I'd say, well, let's spend ten million dollars of legal fees a year and just see where see how far it's we true. Can take it's true. It's a it's a pittance, but like I have to, to that, you know just it's just I have to point out the cost of this patent system. This is a study uh, that came out just recently. Patent trolls cost the economy, in direct costs, $29 billion a year. Large companies spend $7.27 million per troll lawsuit. So Again, this, is, this is not Apple. This is not Google. These are these patent trolls. And this is, but the thing is, is we, we have to redefine how we're handling it. We're about to go into an economy over the next century that intellectual property is the most th important thing. It's more important than than commercial property or, or you know, any kind of uh, your house or anything else. Oh, you know, we there's those this who would disagree time. with you that there is no such thing as intellectual property. Well, we got to figure out what that is. There's argument about that but completely. We to, it's not physical property. That's a big distinction that needs to be made. It, 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 well, we, and we need to make it.
the thing is, is that we need to, you know, the thing is, this is because the thing is, is that it, we are, um, the amount of damage it does to our culture beyond all the 20, 29 billion dollars, the fact that there are many movies that none of us can ever find or see, or, you know, all the orphaned works and all right. the other pieces, this whole system is just completely, I agree with you, you know, needs to be turned inside out and upside down and, and just re not tweaked, but thrown out and rewritten, yeah. you know, and, and we need to start thinking about it in election years of how do we move that forward? Yep. You agree, Andy? That seems like a statesmanlike statement. Yeah, I, I I agree. The patent system is screwed up, but just because it's legal to do something that is pretty horrible doesn't mean that you have a, a right or an obligation. Excuse me, it doesn't mean you have a right to do it. You know, it doesn't mean you have an obligation to do it. I think that if Apple's intention were anything other than to kill products that are competitive with their products, they would have found a different solution that that stopped just short of saying we want to ban this. We want an injunction saying that you cannot sell these devices in the United States of America. They could have said something saying that we want to we will let you. We, we're not going to ban the sale, but we are going to pursue ongoing litigation that says here's how much the, the that at some point you're going to have to come to us with some money uh, for the licensing the patents that we own and it could be anything of any value but they didn't have to simply say you're not allowed to sell any device in this country that we feel infringes on our patents and yeah. if, if, if they're going to if they're going to pick a device to do that with oh boy why do they pick something that is super popular is being praised by pretty much everybody and has so little similarity to anything that apple is selling i don't think apple's intention is to is to knock down things that are competitive with their well, product i think their apple, apple no, is, i think their intention is to knock down google's version of that you no, know so you know no, apple so, tried to keep the samsung know, galaxy 3 out of the again, us they they but, the judge this is the case where the judge same judge judge co said well I can I can I can start working on this, but then you're going to have to backseat your other stuff. So Apple said, "No, we'll go after the Nexus. You can stop this later." They stopped the Galaxy 10. That's an injunction. You okay. can't buy that. I'm saying we're so not going to see this. They are going after consistently, one by one, after the number one smartphone manufacturer after Apple in but the world, not, which is what Samsung. Their, their, their target is not Samsung. Their target is Google. Well, if and, you're and Samsung, you might feel there's know, a little but, bit of a bullseye in your do back. Do you do you think that they're going to go after people using Windows 8 phones? For, for no, lawsuits, no, I don't think so. No, are they? Not, not just because it's not competitive or not competitive. They're not. They're not. The, the thing is, is that Microsoft didn't pick that fight with them. <laughs> you know, I mean, didn't. Well, also, didn't turn that over. Apple. Okay. This is. I, I still think this is between. Uh, this is between Apple there's, and Google and Android. It, and they're. And, how do you and, unlock a Windows phone? You slide, don't you? Yeah, they're not gonna. They're not gonna go after. I don't think they're gonna go after. How do you? Is there a click? Uh, I should look at my Windows phone. Uh, Alex, is there? Alex Gumpel, do you? Is he over there? When you uh, see an email on a Windows phone and there's a uh, email address or a phone number or a website, can you click it? I wonder. Yeah, but I don't think I think that the, the issue is is that this is this is between Apple and Google over Android, and Samsung is just in the middle. I you, think, know, you know, they're you know they're, I, they're I holding think you don't the hot stick. Have to pick one. I think you could say it's against Samsung and Google. It's it's a but I think it's against everybody using an, the Android operating system. I mean, I think that's the you know, and I think Apple is is fo is very focused on that. You know, and, and I think it's very hard to defend Apple. I'm it's, not. Well, I mean, I, 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 it's, conje it's conjecture, and you might, you might very well be right that it is a personal thing between Apple and and Android. But at the same, time, it's unfortunately Android is inseparable from the success of Android. That if Apple feel is, Google, if Google Apple is, feels yeah. any if if Apple feels any pressure from any other mobile manufacturer, it's certainly not Windows Phone at this point. Uh, that so I think I think the what's going to happen is if we see two years from now that Windows Phone has like a 25% market share. Uh, and Microsoft Surface has like a 28% a, a market share. Maybe Apple will suddenly see, you know what? This this thing of an on, we, we have a patent on method by which finger presses are translated into ASCII characters <laughs> via glass device or mechanical device interface via radio or mechanical contrivance. We, yeah, you know what? You're not allowed. You can you can sell the Surface here as long as there's not a keyboard or no way to ki or any way to hook up a keyboard, and you can't allow people to actually touch the the surface of the screen. We'll see if that happens. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 as I said, I think that I think that what we're seeing right now is something that, while I, I, I don't know whether it's good or bad, but I definitely, um, uh, I can't say that I wouldn't do it in the same position. Mm. You know, just because. Well, you're like a said, competitive either, SOB. But I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not that competitive. <laughs> you like to win. No, but I'm, I'm not that competitive with those kind of types of things. When I'm in a, I'm like, I, we teach a lot of other people how to do what we do. We do a lot of other things. That, that, that doesn't bother me. But I, what bothers me is me feeling like I got. Thrown under I know, the bus. I, I, you know, you know, I, and, and I, if I get thrown under I the bus, you know, about. because I'm, I am, I, I'm, you know, I can definitely, I see myself as, you know, we tend to be very, very loyal to people around us, you know, and, uh, and if we feel like we got thrown under the bus, then, you know, we take it personally. Yeah, I understand. And so I think that, I, and I think Apple was I'm doing a lot with Google. Too. 
You are. I have to resist that, uh, though. But the, but the, but what I'm saying is, is that is that, that'll eat you alive. That kind of resentment. Eh, you know. <laughs> I swear to God, it all takes time. It's better to just relax, to chill. Yeah. And so, say, anyways, let's so work some some more on this iPhone thing. We're going to make the iPhone five really really good. Let's talk about the yeah. iPhone five. And Alex Lindsay is here in a rare personal appearance on our show. <laughs> We're so glad to have him. It's a memorable one. See, I got to come here and just cross and all that. Let's no, this up a little bit. I, yeah, it's yeah. exactly the conversation I wanted to have, and it's right. duplicated in our chat room. This is yeah. this is a very this is a great conversation, yeah. and I don't think there is a right answer necessarily. I think it's a lot of opinion. I do hope. I still think fundamentally, it's the, it's the bigger problem is the whole system. Oh, I mean, that's you know, we, we can complain about what well, Apple's doing, but it's really something that we have to get. I we agree. have to attack the whole system. I agree, and I do think that. Uh, uh, this Week in Law is the proper forum for the legal <laughs> discussion of this because we, we are not attorneys and uh, we don't know. But if you right, if no, you watch Denise and Company, when is the next This Week in Law? I hope they're talking about this. Is it uh, Was it yesterday? Or did we move it to Friday? Friday it's Friday. Believe, yeah. So I can almost guarantee that This Week in Law will cover this on Friday. You should watch at 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC on Twit.tv because they're all attorneys, Evan and Denise and everybody and so they're going to have the right. And Denise is, by the way, an intellectual property attorney. That's her field. So I'm, I'm, I'll am I'm, be watching. We should have gotten crazy. her in on this, on this conversation. Why didn't I think of that? Punch her in. And get her. You know why? I'll tell you why. You, you want to be uneducated. I, you want the uneducated yeah. view of you, us just all can, just the pundits, We can get in there. We can, <laughs> we can sock away. We can, and the problem with attorneys is they pause. They think when we first started doing this week in law, I actually edited out the pauses. And then uh, Victor Cayo of... Uh, your typical Mac user ended up doing the two because you uh, you pose you say something and go they they go. <laughs> hmm. Think about all the options and they That's, think and see this is no good for broadcast. We're obviously not thinking at all. I mean I'm, I'm not yeah, thinking. I'm just, I'm just pulling this out. Like where did I find this? We don't okay. take that. We don't take that five seconds to wonder. Am I what? Am, what am I about to say? Is that actionable? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're, they don't want. They're they're just really thinking. So I, so I do encourage you, it, it is perhaps something, because we stopped editing out the pauses. They don't pause as much as they used to, but they, it is a thoughtful show about this subject. We just did the unthoughtful. This is the entertainment. <laughs> this is entertaining, hopefully. No, I think each has its place, because, yeah. you know, we, we're passionate. We feel this. It's, vis it's visceral. Yeah. And there's, a, there's, a, there's something to be said there for that. That's our, that's, that's our new twit podcast the unthoughtful <laughs> that's a good idea and by the way you know i think that w what i think is going to be interesting is is what happens when apple wants to do something like glass like if apple decided that you know glass? when the, when the table turns What's so glass google, google glass, glass google glass oh you mean the glasses oh. like when apple so so here's the thing is that the, the leapfrog that, that no, google, google has no you know what there's so much prior art in uh, in these glasses there's no way app microsoft's doing it fortaleza but I think that'll be that'll be think, the interesting thing. Google, well, it's Google's slugging back. Believe me, they're using Motorola's patents. Right. Uh, I think it was uh, Florian Miller who writes. By the way, this is the uh, blog on this Foss patents. I think he did point out in Foss patents that this the three pat three of the four patents Apple's litigating are brand new. They got them. They filed for them seven years ago, but they got them a few months ago, right. like in mm -hmm. December. And uh, and th that's the difference between Apple's stuff and let's say Motorola or Google. Apple's getting new patents constantly. These other guys are kind of sitting on a patent portfolio for defensive reasons, perhaps offensive, but they're not making new patents, and Apple is. I, I, I've heard I've heard incredible numbers about how many patents yeah. that Apple but files Three of every, these every four week. are brand new. They yeah. got them in December. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we will talk a little bit about iPhone 5 rumors and something that's not a rumor, Mobile Me. What do you do? <laughs> that was close. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> it's three days ago. I am, for those of you listening, making the gesture of a finger across the throat, as a Sicilian mafioso might do, to indicate. Uh, but <laughs> right. a duck being stepped on. That's exactly right. <laughs> Who stepped on a duck? Uh, this portion of the show brought to you by our good friends at Hover.com. I spent a lovely weekend finally making the move to Hover.com. I didn't realize I had been using domain registrars. I thought I just used one other. There's, I have domains spread across the universe, and I'm moving them all to Hover. It is. I have to say, if you're going to do this, it is so much easier to not do what I did, but to use Hover's concierge service. Give them a call. The phone number is at MacBreak.Hover.com. It's right at the top there, 866 731 
6556 and say, help me hover. I'd like to move everything over. Now, this is the nice thing. They'll do now. Nominally, they charge 25 bucks, but they've been very good to our listeners. They, I think they'll move that over for you. They do charge you 10, per, 10 bucks per domain, uh, but then you get an extra year. So you get what's existing and then another year. And that includes things the other guys charge you for, like free who has privacy. That's automatic on hover.com. Nobody knows, you know, your person, a person, a personal address or phone number. It's always protected. Uh, they have unlimited domain forwarding, very nice DNS management tools. And they don't upsell you because they don't, they don't do, they don't do web hosting. They will, they, they'll suggest services and products, but they don't, they don't do the upsell where you have to check a hundred boxes. It is so easy. It's really, really easy. Uh, they don't, they will do the email forwarding, but they don't do the hosting, things like that. Um, there are 25 domains you can now register at hover.com.net.co.ca.org, but also .it. And I love the fact that you can see the ones that other people are putting up for sale that, are, that might that be a little too. bit more expensive. Yeah. yeah it's just Hover's great. great. Just go there. Go to macbreak.hover.com. Pick out some domain names. Go through the process just to see it. They've got great customer service and no-hold policy for uh, calls during business hours. When you get a live person, you got them. They'll solve your problem and won't put you on hold. H-O-V-E-R, hover.com. And if you do buy a domain name, use the offer code MACBREAK and you'll get 10% off. We love them, and I know you will too. And I've, I just, it's so much easier having my domains at Hover, I got to say. Very happy about that. All right. You know, somebody sent me a note. Uh, oh, by the, by the way, I should mention, <laughs> we have been getting tweets from lots of people Showing us where they listen to Mac Break Weekly. Please. <laughs> Here's uh, no bathroom photos. Please. No, this is Ed Lazarus. <laughs> he apparently listens at the Computer Medic Center. Hello, Ed. Here is uh, Jeremy Kelleher. Nice backyard. He's watching from his I backyard. Love this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if there's anyone uh, else. I think that's it. But that's a kind of fun thing. We should start doing that. When send us pictures of where you're listening. And, Does uh, any, so is, is, tweet, is, is tweeting it the best way to do it? Yeah, because I'm easy. watching. I'm watching the Twitter. So tweet it. I've been. Should I've they? Been, should they? I've they, been doing more on Twitter lately. I don't know why. I just. I, I. I don't know why. It just seems like that's the one that's kind of survived. We have good <laughs> conversations on there. I don't know. I guess I. I'm just fickle. For a while, it was Google Plus. In fact, it was one year ago today. Today, that I changed my Facebook because Google Plus is a year old. Last week, I changed my Facebook to I've moved to Google Plus. That didn't last very long. <laughs> I moved back. Sometimes you move into a place, it smells like fish. You just move back out. You say, I'm back. I didn't, that was a bad idea. Apparently they, they cook sardines at Google Plus. I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the iPhone 5 a little bit. Um, we had a little, I, I got a Twitter, from a tweet from somebody who said, why do you assume that Apple's going to put that new connector in? Why are you, we were, I was upset about it, remember, last week. You were sick about it. I was sick to death because I have so much invested in the 30 so many, bin. I have so many con connectors. And um, Ryan Block uh, talked me off the ledge on Twitter a week ago, two ago. He said, no, look, this is an old connector. They needed a new connector. This is a good connector. But somebody else has pointed out that Apple has multiple prototypes. So, yes, it's kind of clear because of the video and the pictures that there is at least a prototype with a new 19-pin connector replacing the 30-pin connector. But that may just be one of several. And maybe if we make enough noise... They'll keep the 30 pin. Why not just do Thunderbolt? I'll tell you why. So what would you use Thunderbolt well, for on a phone? Well, it's just, it would just, oh. just be one data port. What are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to transfer data, 8 gigabytes of data a second from your phone? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking to me. I mean, yeah, come on now. I mean, I, you know, you're talking to the wrong guy. I was like, I want to be able to plug cameras into my phone. <laughs> also, also, I think Thunderbolt needs CPU support, and they wouldn't be able to I'm even sure do it, it on a mobile device. Yeah, yeah, plus, it would be thicker. The, the, other, the other thing is that in, in China, they make all kinds of parts for all kinds of people. And it's there. I, I, I remember a, I remember a story about someone who picked up a counterfeit part and send it, sent it uh -huh. to not me, but to to a, a different well-known like Mac and Apple pundit. Uh, and it looked really good. It had the Apple logo. I think it even had the Apple logo on it. It, it was the right shape. It was the right size. But it was just a phony part that was made by God knows whom for God knows what purpose. So 
it's it, the, that that part is is a really good point of discussion for how we would react to a different port. Right. But it means, as always, I, 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 no matter how excited I get, I get about a certain rumor, no matter how good it, it looks, until a week before release. I have to remind myself that I have no idea what the next iPhone or iPad is going to look like until I'm actually at an event and actually seeing one and holding one in my hands. Yeah. No, I think that's a really important point. That's why I wanted to bring that up. And I wouldn't put it past Apple to make a few phony prototypes just oh, to I don't see think they, who's I don't leaking. Think with that. Well, They've done it in the past. In fact, we, they, we, we heard that they would, if you're new at Apple, they'll make up a fake project for you to work on for a few months just to see if you're a leaky sieve. Hmm. That's pretty, that's hardcore about secrecy. And didn't Tim Cook say he was going to double down on secrecy? <laughs> well, it started, you know, I, I think that Apple for a long time was very, very quiet. And then it started to get a little more leaky. Yeah. And so I and think it, they're just kind of pulling, pulling that back in again. Wells Fargo, uh, for what it's worth, they have an analyst division. Because evidently Wells Fargo is the, uh, the leading expert in technology news. Should I not even quote this? Oh, I just thought it was, it was just a nice thing yeah. to say. <laughs> <laughs> for Apple, you know, some people watch this show and they say, you guys should not should. be on this show because you should only say nice things about Apple on a show called Mac Break Weekly. So I'm going to say something nice. Wells Fargo says the iPhone 5 launch will be the biggest product launch in consumer electronics history. That's a big comment. Mm, Bigger okay. than Connect. Bigger than the Galaxy. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what is, what is that? Connect was huge. Microsoft, I did a thing, yes. and it was on an Xbox, and they sold like a million of them in a day. It was like huge, bigger than iPad. I guess if there's, I mean, it depends on, I guess, how many people are using the three GSs or the, you know, a lot of the the cheaper ones, and maybe this is going to be the big bump up above the four S. But the reason, that, the reason this is germane is Wells Fargo is telling its clients, its customers, that the stock is undervalued. Mm. Isn't it crazy to have a company the size of Apple and, and have them keep on saying that the stock is undervalued? <laughs> it's crazy. It's worth more. <laughs> um, they expect a 12x price to earnings. I don't. I, so I don't. I don't understand how the iPhone becomes the biggest consumer product launch in history. There's. I mean, Apple is behind. I think half of those. I can tell you right now. 10, it, but it won't be if they change the damn. Con I'm sorry, Father. Forgive <laughs> me. The GD connector. Then see that's how mad I am about that. Well, I mean, we'll we'll, we'll forget all about it so long as it's a so as long as it's a good decision. I don't think that anyone's going to make a big fuss about it. All right, all right. I mean, it's 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 a it's 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 tough beans for anybody who has like a hardwired dock connector in their car. But for almost everybody else, it'd be a very easy well, but thing it's also just like, to buy a new cable. If you yeah. have the, if you have the, I, I, I got my wife one of those little speak, alarm clock speaker systems that you drop your phone, your iPhone That's into. That's what I have. Yeah, those are the kind of things that, that it gets, becomes a real off. bummer. That's a $200 clock. Right. No, I didn't yeah. buy it. They gave it to me. But it, but that, I bought it. I just want to say I bought it. <laughs> I have that yeah. Renew clock. You know, we, we reviewed it and mm -hmm. uh, it watches you sleep and then gives you a graph on your iPhone of how well you slept. <laughs> right. And then it asks you when you wake up, how do you feel? How do you feel? Tired? Happy? Grumpy? And then I have the graph. Of how you felt? Of how I sleep. See, I was up. And then I was asleep. And then I was up. And I was just, I'm an old man. I get up to pee. Come on, give me a break. Mine is just always up. It's like little uh, naps. Uh, see, the white ones are, we don't see you. You're either awake or there's no signal. The little ones are light sleep, and the long ones are... But see, this isn't going to work anymore. Because it, this it's a, requires I'm one sure of these 30-pin connectors. I, I'm, sure that, I'm sure that someone is going to make a little, like, uh, Doc Snuggy for it. That'll, that'll make you <laughs> think. Doc <laughs> Snuggy. No. Oh, I'm, I'm serious. Skosh, Skosh made something like that when they changed the, the, the internal configuration of, yeah. the, of the pin connector so yeah. that no, it, that the power pass-through became different. So you got this I little... Know. little know. Yeah. It's going to be okay. I know. I'm just see, pe people, people like me will, cr will create a huge stink about it in the first week, particularly if it looks like the only reason why they did it was because style. But after that, it's going to be a non-issue. I'm going to cheer myself up. Here's uh, David Lovecamp. He's watching us at work right now. David has a very nice work setup that includes a Chicago Bulls poster and a St. Louis Cardinals mouse pad. He's clearly and a calculator. I don't. I let's guess what David does for a living. I don't know. <laughs> He's pointed at a cube. Here's another Here. guy watching at work. This is Nicholas DeSalvo. Oh, he's got like, he's got stuff. He's got a whiteboard and stuff. Here's a guy, Mark Moran. 
He's outside at the pool. Oh, I like that one. He's barbecuing. That is the way. He's barbecuing on this day before yeah. the Independence Day holiday. How about Kyle Duffield? This is awesome. I know. I love this. <laughs> Forget <laughs> the news. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like it. we could talk about patents, but we yeah. can just look at everybody's house. Yeah, Aaron Nelson. Let's see where Aaron's watching from. I'm just, I'm, everybody's setting his, that's, that's work, looks like. He sells uh, Apple stuff right there, doesn't that? Or something. He's got a lot He's of it. He's got boxes there. He's got bags. That is a well-designed yeah. desktop. Isn't that nice and clean? Yeah, my never. It's a, like all that. all Bluetooth. I don't know what that little screen, a little bitty screen, a ginormous screen, and then a MacBook Air. He's all set, and he's got his iPad there or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's what a that great is. setup. That's a nice setup. A, here's a, here's a, a magic keyboard. Andre Baron from his home office. It, apparently, it's brutally hot in Minnesota, so everybody's staying inside. There's Andy and Otko on the screen there for Matt Puckzo. This is actually the way to use two screens. Yeah, One side by switch. side. And yes. then look, he's yeah. got the iPad if he needs to, you know, play Angry Birds. This is this is a guy with a chimpanzee uh, ceramic He's eating a little lunch there. He's having a little uh, Chinese food. That's Justin Clayton. It's like After Effects. <laughs> that's, I, I, I think that's an After Effects I, interface. I have opened a, a can of worms here. <laughs> it just keeps on coming. Duncan yeah, uh, we, we just, Nar. We'd especially Knar. like to hear from all of our listeners inside Apple who watch live while yeah. coding top secret products. <laughs> Let's see some pictures of an iPhone 5. hardware prototypes. Financial Acrobat has a scary dog, but uh, he's got a nice... A lot of people listening at work, oh, look, this look, that looks like a podcast. This is Mike Kerr. He's his home studio. Nice setup. Joe Cunha is making lunch and watching Mac Break Weekly. Ooh. Oh, hey. Looks like a hibachi. If you're nearby, you can feel free to come by. <laughs> you're a big griller. Uh, Alex, I'm, do you I'm, love I'm, the grill? I'm lighting up the big green egg uh, tomorrow. The big green egg? What that's is my that? big green egg. That's my, that's my, uh, my, that's my, that's, that's my, your grill? My grill. Here's a guy I'm watching it in the sous nursing home. Sous vide with a big green Nick, egg. Tomorrow. Nicholas Pitts watching in the nursing home there. This looks like an apartment where there is probably a bong on the coffee table. I'm just saying. There's a lot of dude. I'm just saying. Dude, Alex, I recognize the bros. Alex is so aggro, man. <laughs> like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> Shaggy Dog Design Studios on the line here. This is Thomas Lampman. All right, this is enough. I can't do it. I'm getting, I'm getting so many of these now. But isn't that we should do that? We should this do that is every a show. Week. So this is the thing is I this should. this each Ooh, week look at this guy's desktop. He's got a picture of the moon, Ooh, a no, big no. high res picture of the moon. That looks like a thirty inch screen he's got there. That's nice. That's nice. That's Jason Perry. Here's somebody in Scotland. Nexus nineteen seventy four. He says he's watching from a rainy day in Scotland. Okay, I'm jealous. That looks nice there. It's a little cooler there. It's for his flat in rainy Scotland. Some of our team was in Scotland last week doing doing a stream, and and I was in Washington D.C. and it was 104 degrees. Oh, it, really it was brutal. Uh, it was brutal last week. I was there for the storm. It was exciting. I hope you all are gonna have a great Independence Day holiday. Now you have to declare your independence from me.com. Look at this. <laughs> this is the sign they put on the front page. Saturday night. Saturday night. I was like, <laughs> it's like seven o'clock. I'm like, oh my it's, gosh. It swings when you first right. get there. That's well well played. That's beautiful kind of depressing yeah. so for a limited time if you are a mobile me member you can go to me.com and i'm going to do this sign in to download your photos uh from i gallery so and i, your I just files say, my disc. this is this is well well done by apple because this could have gone really badly saturday night i suddenly realized it was the last day and i went up to my mobile me and realized there was like 28 gigs of stuff there that i had to <laughs> pull off and i was like no there's no way i can do that from the hotel i'm in so um yeah. well I'm really here's glad the thing it's this. kind of a cross-loading so you log in to your Apple account, and then uh, it cross-loads it over to uh, iCloud. That's great. If But then what happens if you said 28 gigs? You only have 5 gigs of iCloud storage. What happens uh, I have then? More, more than that in iCloud. So uh, I presume, I guess, you'd buy more. I, I, I already did. Yeah. Also, Congratulations. Also I, uh, I've moved also it all been. over. I haven't done that just part. like that. See, I was in, I was See doing how fast mad. That was? I was doing mad like crazy. Like, I'm just going to have to pick and choose what I'm going to keep because everything else is going to go. Oh, I got more bad news for you. End of this month, iWork dies. I never used iWork. I use it. I use it all the time for keynotes. I would upload keynotes there, share them, oh, okay. have them there in case, you know, worst thing that could happen, right? You got a keynote presentation, your computer dies, your thumb drive dies. You don't have a copy of it, but you could say, hey, let me borrow your computer. You go to iWork and there it is. That's I just, why I did that. I just kept them all on thumb drives. Well, what if you lose your thumb drive? I, don't, I, have, I guess that would be possible. Any suggestions, Andy? What Are you writing articles for the Chicago Sun-Times on mobile me replacements? 
if I could, uh, not not really. I'm, I, I have I have some notes on a couple of different things to move to, but the thing, but the, but the the reason why Mobile Me got closed down was because everybody already sort of independently found their own replacements for Mobile Me right. starting like four years ago. Uh, well, but you know really who did is, the, I, I is the most vulnerable among us. The the people who weren't sophisticated enough to do that. I talked to somebody, a blind user in Hawaii, lovely uh, elderly woman who used iWeb. Uh, on the weekend, she said, "What am I going to do? How do I save my site?" Yeah, yeah and and, and I, I, there there are a couple of good web tools uh, uh, for that. I mean, Sandbox is really great. As a matter of fact, it, it actually also has like a built-in iWeb migration tool. I told her uh, about that. Sandbox. Good. I'm glad you agree. Right. Yeah. Also, also, it's it's probably the. Uh, it's it was the it was the app that I would recommend that I used to recommend people use instead of iWeb, because it gives you all the flex all the ease of of uh, of setup of uh, of a website through iWeb without being nearly as annoying or or as limiting. Um, and also, if you're launching, I I was surprised and pleased the other day when I launched Aperture for just no for an unrelated project, and it said, oh by the way, uh, Mobile Me is shut down. Do you want me to download all of your photos you've put into mobile galleries and and add them to your Aperture library? I, I already I already downloaded everything, but I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, yeah, move it doesn't hurt. And it, it was and it was, it was an interesting experience because I I downloaded everything about three days before the shut the the the, the announced shutdown, and it was like, it really was like going through a storage locker that you filled up and sort of abandoned three years ago, because it was just nothing but like photos and documents of things I was working on like in two thousand seven two thousand eight, <laughs> because I really hadn't even touched it outside of outside of those hysterically angry days when you really need to share a big file with somebody. And for some reason, these seven other ways you would usually do it, none of them worked. So it's like, it's come down to this. I'm actually signing, signing in to mobile me. This is the sign that God has not chosen me as one of his beloved on You're this not day. One of the chosen people, Andy. Yes. You're a mobile beer. That's pretty much the same for me. I mean, I, I had, when I started going through it, it was like, I think the latest entry was like fall of 2009. Yeah. So I get it. Um, so what if you had a, a gallery on there? Is it analog for that that you could use? That's a, an Apple analog or do you have to go to, I don't know, Google Picasa or something? I think that, I think the best choice is going to be Flickr or Picasa or an, uh, an independent photo hosting site. I don't think that there's any, <coughs> I don't think that Apple has any sort of really happy direct replacement. Uh, there is something kind of like that on the iOS version of iPhoto uh, where you can create journals that are uh, nice free form presentations of, uh, of photos arranged the way that you want them to, but that's not on the desktop yet. So uh, yeah, I, th this is this is the reason why I really never chose uh, uh, I never really chose iDisk or Mobile Me for my photo sharing. It's always been Flickr because yeah. Yeah. I like this nice central c central repository that does a lot more than just allow me to share albums. Uh, for the developers using iOS six, uh, Mac Rumors has a great uh, preview. Some desktop shots of uh, the web versions of notes and reminders. This is the iCloud beta portal, portal which has been activated for iOS 6 beta developers at beta.icloud.com. Um, here's the new uh, Find My iPhone. It's kind of interesting. There's the map up in the right corner. There's a picture of, in this case, an iPad and three buttons, play sound, lock, or erase. It's still a Google map, which is kind of interesting. I wonder if that'll change. Um, notes, this is notes on the, it looks just like actually the notes, uh, notepad on the iPhone, except that you have enough room now you have on the left, you have, it's kind of, <laughs> it's, we, we now realize this is a leather folio because it's got the stitching, the little pocket stuffed in the pocket is your list of uh, notes. I'm really kind of over that. That's one thing I have to say about all the Apple. <laughs> this is like, I don't really need them to make it look like a notebook. Yeah. This kind of drives me crazy. This is almost extreme at this point. Yeah. Uh, I, I know they want it to feel physical, but the whole thing makes me a little crazy. Yeah. Reminders has been removed from the calendar app and is now in its own app. And there's the reminders. It's not so uh, skeuomorphic. It's not so uh, realistic. It just looks like a little bit more digital. Yeah. Um, I didn't know this. 125 million iCloud users as of April. 125 million. That's a lot of users. Yeah. Well, but remember that. Remember that whenever you activate a new phone, it pretty much walks you through. Hey, touch this button, and now we'll give you a free iCloud account. But you don't have to. You don't have to, but how many people say no? 
Yeah, I mean, it's I, worth I, it. I I'd recommend be... people do it, but I think, I, I yeah. you know, well, I'm, I'm looking, like I looked at Jennifer's iPhone the other day uh, to see if it was en enabled. It wasn't. I looked at her iPad to see if it was enabled. It wasn't. I said, do you want to back this up? Then I made a huge mistake. You... I logged her into my iCloud account and all my messages <laughs> <laughs> flooded into her phone. Nice. That was good. Yeah. I made a good friend that way. <laughs> so don't do that, folks. Yeah. Give, it's free to create an independent account. And you get five gigs of storage. You should do that. Because if you if you share accounts, then you also are sharing things like messages. By the way, you cannot now download any more the uh, messages uh, beta. I tried to the other oh, really? day on the new Retina and because I wanted it on the Retina. So I think that's a signal. Mountain Lion, which is going to, I think, feature that uh, it's coming soon. app, is coming soon. I can't wait. Turned it off. I hope it's better than Lion. <sighs> Not that I'm bitter. So what do we? Oh, hey, can I? Can I? Can I, I? I talked about something on the last show I was on. Can I give people an update? Yes. So I um I updated uh, my my tower to Lion. It was the last computer left. I had put Lion slowly on things carefully, and my tower has a software RAID. Yeah. So it has three three drives RAIDed with you know my Aperture library and other things on it, um and um and so when the when Lion came up, yeah, the RAID was gone. There were just oh, no. there were just three drives. Was your data there? All the all my data was there. Oh, good. Because no, 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 no. No, the data, the data was there, but the, the you drives. You can't read were, it. Yeah, when it, the raid it, is it, broken, it you can't read it. It could see three drives, but yeah. but it can no longer see the raid. That's not good. And so I, you know, I called. Of course, I called disk savers. I was like getting ready to cause, you know, and I talked to Brent uh, Schnarr, who's one of our guys, uh, one of our very smart uh, guys at the Pixel Score, and um, he's like, oh, just put Snow Leopard back on. Yeah. And uh, and he said it'll just find it. It'll just build, rebuild it immediately. And so, just in case you're wondering, put a new drive in. Installed Snow Leopard. As, it, there was no rebuild. As Copy soon as Snow the data Leopard, off the raid. Oh no, no, I took it all. I mean, so just to put it in perspective, uh, the reason I wasn't too stressed about it is up until the last two months, everything had been, and I've been really busy. I've been really busy lately. Everything was completely backed up. Yeah, so it wasn't. It wasn't like I lost not, a time. You're no fool. But at the same time, the last three months of photos were on the aperture, and I hadn't done my little backup thing, my vault, because I was up, upgrading some Drobos and stuff like that. Anyway, so. Um, Anyway, but just if you ever if you ever do that, one thing to know is if you go into Lion, your software raid will be broken, and I don't even know how to fix it. And, That's uh, terrible. Snow Leopard will just immediately see it again, and it's not a problem. So, I think I think people, some people were asking me on. It's a software raid, right? And that, it's, That's part of it. Yeah, but but it's just you just and you know obviously the big uh, thing to do is that we call them scary raids in our office for a good reason. All of the raids that we build are called, called scary raids They're to remind fast, everybody. But not reliable. Fast, yeah, but don't depend <laughs> on them. And, and the other thing is, is that someone asked me, like, are you going to build? A, it, part of the problem was the raid was really small. It's three gig, three terabytes. Yeah. I don't want to build it any bigger than that because I don't ever want to allow myself to put more than three terabytes on on something that's that's there. So you, know? you do you're doing a striped raid, not a mirrored raid. You're right, doing it striped. so that's fast writing. I, it's 300 megs a second. So you can record your well, like when you're well, video. you can record video, but also you can you know everything runs faster. You know, and if you have an SSD startup drive and a, and a, a three-drive RAID, um, your tower is about, you know, as fast as it's going to get. I got to show you something. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah. By the way, I mentioned this last week, interface lift. So I only have 2880 by 1800. When you get your new Retina, you've got to upgrade all your desktop wallpaper. Nice. <laughs> Cause, but fortunately, the I'm never going to get my new Retina. I've given up. <laughs> How long did you, you ordered it day of? And they said, I ordered what? a minute after. You got to get, we were sitting on the show and I'm sitting there going, refresh, refresh, yeah. refresh. As yeah. soon as it comes up, I went through and it was the amount of time it took me to run the order. And I had, yeah. and I had ordered it. It was, it was a built order. It had all the stuff in yeah. it. And, um, uh, and I just checked the Apple and it's like delivery sometime between July 9th and July 20th. And. Well, let me just, I just, not that I'm since bitter. you're going to get this soon, I just want to show you the USB 3.0 benchmarks that I did. Oh, is it working now? So here's the deal. This, I had to find a USB. The, a lot of the USB 3 drivers aren't done yet. Really? That's well, this I is thought. definitely USB 3 speed. So a lot of the, uh, I, I bought uh, a uh, Corsair GT that did not live up to its promise in terms of USB 3 speed, but this is a USB thumb drive. Uh, using the, uh, I like this. This is the Black Magic. I think you might have even recommended it. Back, yeah. Speed uh, yeah. test. You can buy it Just on whacker. the App Store because and you can see it's from Black Magic. Because really, what it's saying is how high quality video can you right. read and write. But this is a USB thumb drive. This is the HyperX from thumb Kingston. Drive. It is a 64, thumb drive. 64 gigabytes for about a hundred bucks. It's reading at 250 megabytes a second. A thumb drive. And it's writing at 109 megabytes a second. But you really want to see something even more awesome, awesomer? Mm. This is the native SSD built into the Retina. 
So it's using, they use a very good Sandforce controller. It's writing at 383 megabytes a second on SATA. This is SATA 6, of course. And it's reading, it's redlining the Blackmagic uh, mm -hmm. speed thing at 442 megabytes a second. It was very close to half a gigabyte a second. Is that fast enough? You know, I, I don't want to sound like an old fogey, but... But I remember slow. back when we spent no no we spent we spent two thousand dollars to build a hundred and twenty gigabyte drive that could do one hundred and ninety to two hundred megab megabytes a second. Now you can do it in your laptop on the SSD and in the Retina. I know it's crazy. So I'm very happy with that thumb drive, but I would caution that not all USB three thumb drives seem to give you the full throughput. I had a I tried I bought the uh, I bought the Corsair and I like Corsair thumb drives. I've had a, a number of Corsair thumb drives, and uh, its results were not. Quite as fast. Here's the here's the Corsair results. I got seventy eight point nine megabytes per second. Right again. I'm just like hundred forty read thumb drive. We, we used to restripe our raids every week to make sure that they could do thirty megs a second to do uncompressed SD video. And now there's a thumb drive. That's Something, it's important. For I know people. I'm sounding like an old fogey, but I just have to keep on reminding people that this is incredible. <laughs> thumb drive. It's a sick. It's a hundred dollars, sixty four gigabytes around my neck. Yeah. And it and it's at that speed. So what I'm using it for is aperture. That's what I put all my photos on. Right. Because I don't want to fill up my internal drive with pictures. Yeah. The drives that we were restriping all the time, they were six gigabytes. <laughs> <laughs> that was, they were huge. Anyway, and and uh, you know I don't mind 256 gigs. I bet. Well, okay. So you did a BTO. You put 16 gigs of RAM, of course. Yeah. Put the faster and processor. How big a hard drive? Seven. Um, you 756. Get the 756. So it was, and you got the top of the line i7. Yes. That's gonna be a screamer. It's fast. Well, it's also we, going to be four thousand dollars. <laughs> oh, almost. It was I mean, well, a little bit more than that. It was it was with tax and and you know of course I got the you know the Apple Care stuff and all that other stuff. So the but the um uh we already started doing streaming tests with it and it's faster. The laptop is faster than our our desktop when it comes to like Wirecast. Is actually the laptop is actually using less um, CPU power than our tower. Just saying. So I have to log into iWork. It says, dear iWork user. Did you know that this was going to happen? That they were going to kill this iWork.com? Uh, there, there are rumors End of it. End of July, I mean, you will no longer be able to access your documents on the iWork.com site or review them on the web. Sign in and download them to your computer. Moving forward, you can use iCloud to store your documents. I really liked this uh, iWork uh, system, though, because it was, I don't know, it was just seemed nice, but I guess nobody used it. I didn't like it. You didn't like it. I want to be. I, I just want it to be. Here's the thing: is I want. I want it to be a pretty version of Google Docs. Like that's like for me. That's what I like. Ooh, I, what I like. Be, well, that's called Microsoft's Office 365. By I mean, the way, just, yeah, I it's mean, exactly what Office 365. I just want it to be Pages. Do you mind using Word and I hate PowerPoint Excel. and Excel? I hate okay. Excel. Like, like, you and, won't like, like it then. And the only thing I hate more than Excel are the spreadsheets in Google. Do you like Chrome? Yeah, I love Chrome. How do you like Chrome on the iPhone and the iPad, gentlemen? I. I I like it. I don't know if it's compelling enough for me to constantly be, you know, figuring it out. But I thought I thought it's very snappy. I, I, I installed it immediately. It's not. Uh, of course, Apple will not let any third-party browser be the default browser. Right. Um, but it's very Chromish. Yeah. And then you have a, a menu here: new tab, new incognito tab, bookmarks. Because it's Chrome, it syncs all your bookmarks from your desktop. It also syncs your tabs. So if I've got a tab open on another device. I can see what these are. These are the pages. I should be careful what I'm looking at. These are the pages I've got open on my MacBook Retina, my Galaxy S3, my Ubuntu, my uh, MacBook Air 13, my iPhone 4. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it's, I, I think it's. Those awesome. are the pages I have open. And especially if you're living in a Google in, environment, we we have you know we're we're generating five or ten Google Docs a day, and so you know all of this stuff works really well. And here's a feature that a lot of people seem to like. There's a button on here that says Request Desktop Site. So if you get a mobile site, I should go to, um, here, I'll go to Leoville. That's a good one because I, I have it mobilized, which is, by the way, no longer the thing to do. Uh, you're supposed to uh, be uh, adaptive and, and, and uh, <laughs> so you, it's so hard to get used to using a keyboard. Oh, look at it. It gave me the desktop site. Huh. <laughs> huh. So you, if, you gave, if you got the mobile site, you can request the desktop site. Um, I guess I'm smart enough not to do that on the iPad. I'm so smart. Um, I've always thought so, Leo. Yes. Voice search yes. built in. That's kind of neat. Probably also a violation of uh, Apple's patents. <laughs> um, so this is, uh, it, and it feels snappy. What do you think? How do you like Chrome on the, uh, 
on the I like it. IPad I like it a lot. I, I love the way that it organizes open tabs on uh, on the iPhone edition. It makes a much better use of uh, of the window space. Mm -hmm. uh, it's prettier. There are nice uh, sense uh, comments. Uh, really, really nice. Uh, sensible little graphical flourishes that help you as you move from one part of the app to the other. The only real disadvantage, I, uh, the only real uh, thing I don't like about it is that sharing is really very, very limited, if not non-existent. Um, yeah. I, I, I ran into two problems my first day with the with the iPhone and the iPad versions. Uh, I'm just using that. I'm enjoying it on the iPhone, going through the things I, I use uh, a browser for on the iPhone. I hit a page saying, oh, I want to tweet out a link to this. Oh, Nope, sorry. There's no like share. There's no sharing button, so I can't just simply tweet out a link. I actually had to go into Safari, reopen it, and then hit that button there. Um, that is that is frustrating. Do you think that's an that, Apple thing or a, a, a Chrome thing? I have no idea. I wanna... It's 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 an omission. I think they really should have fixed that. Yeah. Because uh, it's such a useful feature. But then there's another thing that uh, I've, I've gotten used to in Safari, where I was reading an article, uh, tapped on a link, it turned out to be a PDF. And so almost instinctively, I wanted to send that into iBooks so I could save it for, for offline reading. And of course, you can't do that in Google Chrome. You can't just simply funnel something into, into iBooks or into another PDF reader. So there's that as well. So that's really the only, com the only complaints I was having about it. Uh, of course, sharing with Google Plus works just fine. Oh, of course, yes. <laughs> Frictionless. It's, it's like, I just might point that out. It's, it's no like, trouble. It's, so so many Google products on on every single piece of hardware, be it uh, be it uh, Windows, uh, Mac, <coughs> Android, or iOS. It's like your your the product is on the top of the hill. And at the bottom of the hill is always Google Plus. So if you right. just kick one pebble over, a <laughs> then the natural flow of water is to land it right in the middle of Google Plus. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, somebody's pointing out, and this of course is true, that iOS 5 does have an API for at least for tweeting. Uh, and so there would it would be an easy thing for Google to have added tweet this. Um, so you're right, I think, Andy, that that's something that Google uh, omitted. It does work well with Google Plus. Did we say that? <laughs> oh, by the way, <laughs> uh, yeah. iPhone and uh, iPad. I, I, you know, it's nice to have. I, I like Chrome. I use Chrome on most of my platforms, as you can see. So it's nice to have it. Have you gotten into the habit now where you go to any other browser and you just start typing searches into the main into the main bar? Like, like I use Chrome like by ninety percent of the That's time. That's exactly why. And then, I like and then it. you're like, what, "What's wrong with these?" You know, and then but you realize oh, I'm in the wrong browser. They're fixing it. The next Safari yeah. is going to fix it. You don't have to worry about Man, that. The wrong we'll browser. have one box. You enter everything right. into one box. Firefox doesn't have that. Although you could still type in the URL box the search, right? And it will still work. Um, but you, you did you did bring up a good point, Leo. I mean, I the, the, the uh, I, I almost this, almost the, the moment that I uh, that uh, that I started thinking about something, I was I moved over to the, the during Fireball page, and I saw that Gruber was thinking the exact same thing, which is that man, if Apple is allowing a third a, a such a prominent third party browser, but they're not allowing people to change the default browser away from Safari, is that going to be a future source of legal trouble for Apple? Mm -hmm. Is that going to be a real non-competitive problem? That is, 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 is that a vulnerability that a uh, a, a, a sufficiently uh, annoying <laughs> company that Apple has declared war against could make trouble for Apple in return? One good thing, uh, Google. Uh, this announced this at the Google I/O. You can now edit uh, Google Docs. Look, it's huge. I am editing my Google Doc. <laughs> Right from within iOS, that's a nice feature. I'll have to say, happy about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Google is working on offline editing uh, as well, although not implemented uh, yet. That's going to be a nice capability when you can just get on the plane and everything will that, be there. That shows up for me every time I get on a plane because yeah. we have so much you stuff do in Google Docs, and you're just kind of like, oh, yeah. yeah. So that's going to be huge for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I presume it'll do it. iOS in on iOS, iOS web market share. Now past sixty five percent, so uh, net net market share does this. iOS dominates when it comes to web access, sixty five percent, fifteen percent increase year over year. Android one percent, <laughs> BlackBerry two percent. I probably spend eighty percent of my web browsing on. On uh, why on my iPad or iPhone? If these numbers about Android adoption are correct, why is Android only one percent? iPad. Ah, 
I don't believe I, I I I haven't read that. Every time I've seen a number like that, I've, I've seen like how they've uh, how they affected it. It is it, every time I've seen a number like that, it turns out that it's been all of iOS versus versus all of Android. When you factor in tens of millions of iPads into the equation, it's no it's no wonder. I haven't seen that exact uh, that exact study that you're you're quoting right there, but I wouldn't be surprised. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, especially especially because right, uh, but. It's it's amazing how much traffic full stop is being done via mobile devices. I, I just oh, yeah. hooked up uh, I just hooked up analytics on my own blog on the celestial waste of bandwidth just like a month and a half ago, and it really did surprise me that uh, by by a, a considerable stretch most people are are accessing my blog like via some kind of a mobile device. I, I would not have predicted that. So Android has fifty percent market share, but Apple has sixty five percent. Browsing. I have to admit that I find that, that browsing, I mean, I have an, a Galaxy S2 that I use probably 30% of the day. And um, uh, I, I don't find that browsing on it is particularly easy. Well, Not, it's hard I mean, on any phone. It's you hard think on any it's phone, as good on the iPhone? I think it's easier on the iPhone. Okay. I think it's. I would go to the iPad or a desktop. I think the autofill on the, on the, auto fill on the I, iPhone is better than the Android, than the S2. There's a patent for that. Yeah, evidently, because it's, <laughs> it's really painful. <laughs> The App Store will soon have its own food and drink. You'll be happy about this, Mr. Uh, Griller yes. and Bartender. Its own food and drink category on the I already the App have Store. most of those applications. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Mac Stories. Developers are getting emails saying, we will migrate your relevant apps to the new food and drink category if you have a food or drink product. That's good. Yeah. I wonder what the, what the criterion is for giving a product its own category. Maybe enough flow. Because, I mean, the, the thing is, I think that this is the... Uh, I think that food and drink is just such a huge place for a platform, for, you know, for like the iPad. Right. That's how I make, like, crepes or something, is that I, I, I put an iPad, you know, carefully it's away. yeah. And I, and I go to Epicurious, and I search perfect. for the, the crepe mix it's, that I'm was, looking for. It's and, made... And if you have something like... This is the... Uh, I have the Logitech Ultra Thin uh, keyboard cover which is a keyboard, but it's also a perfect angle for cooking. Right. So I use this. I actually leave this on my counter in my kitchen all the time. Uh, that's the iPad. And yes, he throws a towel over the you keyboard. See, it's kind of messy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of, but you know, the, I'll just, I run my keyboards through the dishwasher. What can I say? Bob Mansfield retiring. He's the uh, heavy set guy you see on all those uh, videos. He's the, you know, I had, okay, please forgive me for this. Apple, you know, when they show the videos, they're all very effete, nicely dressed. And Bob Mansfield's the good blue-collar guy in those videos. It makes you feel like, yeah, there's a guy in there who's who's really getting down. He's doing a job. He's working. He is, of course, the senior vice president of hardware engineering. Right. But he just looks like that nice blue-collar guy in there who's really fixing his stuff. You know, I, I get in there with a wrench. You give me some pliers, and I will fix it. So there's Johnny Ive. He's very effete. There's, you know, Scott Forstall. He's very effete. They're all hipsters. Look at Johnny Ive in his black collarless <laughs> T-shirt. And then scroll down to Bob Mansfield. Hey, I can, you give me a wrench, a hammer in 15 minutes. I can fix that right away. You give me a... <laughs> Look at him. A I wrench. love him. Yeah, I need a wrench, a hammer, and a Chinese dictionary. I I'm, would, I'm good to go. You catch me with a collarless shirt, you can kick my butt because I am not going to wear one of them things. And, uh, yeah, they made me take the pocket protector out just for this picture, but I'm putting it back in immediately afterwards. He's a real man. Andy, Andy left us. He was like, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to be with these guys. No, I'm just... I, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not the smartest human being in the world, but there's some dumb things that I don't do, and that is make comments about other people's personal appearance. That's all. That's all. If, 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 we're, if we're still doing this podcast as like audio only, maybe I'd be dumb enough to risk it, but I've got nothing to say on that subject. You guys can drink your Chardonnays, your Chablis is there. I, give me They're a good all... beer anytime. I want the Iron Town Hell yeah, that's all I'm gonna drink. Anyway, all no the Apple employees mentioned in the past five minutes. I think you're all lovely, <laughs> lovely people. Lovely, lovely no, people. And, I, and, I, and of course, it's it's completely bigoted and biased to me, and I apologize. <laughs> but I love the fact that you get Bob Mansfield on these videos, and he's just a, he's he looks like me. He's, he's, well, he's, and he's, he's and a he's, little heavy set. No nonsense. No nonsense. Like yeah. this is what we had to do. It, it looks like he might be from Pittsburgh, which is always something that I respect. Yeah. Don't you think? I, I, I like that he talks like an engineer, though. He's an engineer. 
Anyway, we'll be sorry to miss him. I just wanted to give him a, a nice farewell. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, now that he, he did no that so well with his, with his prominent position, you thought you'd say some things. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> Hey, I gave up on getting invited to Apple events a long time ago. Let me tell you right now. Orbits, get this. And they and they admit it. When you search Orbits, which is the travel site where you get hotels, flights, so forth, when you search Orbits on a Mac, it recommends more expensive hotels. And and they admit it, saying the travel search engine is simply showing users what it thinks they prefer. Orbits chief executive officer, Barney Harford said data collected by Orbitz shows Mac users are 40% more likely than PC users to book four- or five-star hotels. So we're going to show them the four- or five-star hotels. This uh, is good business. Yeah. They, 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 you see the other ones. It's just, it's just, it's just what it's listed. If I were a it? Windows user, I'd be hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's the thing. is All i got to say is that if you're using Orbitz to buy your hotels, you're crazy. That's most Mac users are smart. Uh, Windows users are too smart to do. They're that. using Hotels.com because using you get one free the one? night for every ten nights, and they're not paying me to say that. Well, I've got that like the one you, fifteen I mean, nights you waiting the, for me for free. We should do a travel program with you. I'd love to do a travel. You program. are the frequent traveler. I would love to do it. You and Johnny Jet will get you on together. I'm good to go. So I'm what ready. do you you use Hotels? Hotels.com. Not Priceline. No. 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 Not Jet Setter. No. No. <laughs> not, no. Not Hip Monk. Let me, let me repeat. For every 10 nights, you get one free night. See, I don't get you 10 nights search a year. engines, you get real... No, see, I, I get... I have like I have like 17 free nights. <laughs> I do. That's because... Oh, wait a minute. In order to get 17 free nights, I just <laughs> want to point out, folks, he has to spend 170 nights in a hotel. <laughs> but how, how, how are those hotels in the Tenderloin? Still, <laughs> still with the really crunchy... No, but here's the best part is that it, it's just... A, it's just a, you get... It, it just discounts whatever you have. So 10%. You, so so I'll have, have a coupon for like a the average of those 10 nights, so $170. So if I want to stay in a really nice five-star hotel and it's too expensive, it's too expensive for me, I can't afford that kind of thing on my own, I can just get it, I can just discount whatever that cost is as well. And it's great because it keeps your wife from being totally upset with you because you're, you spend 170 nights in a hotel. 170 nights, and that's in a year probably. So just to be fair, it's like a lot of the stuff that's booked for our company is booked through my account. So it's not just me. Oh, okay, all right. All right. I was talking. That's when I when I realized that I was talking to someone at Hotels.com and I was talking about how much I love their their service and blah blah blah. And and they said, yeah, travel agents use it all the time. They just book everything for their clients through their through their and own, then through they that get 10%. account. And they, and they get they get one every ten. <laughs> and they said, yeah, they'll have like that's how cruises tonight. work too. You know, that's one of the reasons we get these Mac Mac Mania cruises is if you book if you if for every I think it's hundred uh, or I can't remember what it is. You get a room a, a free room for every I don't know fifty yeah. rooms whatever it is you book mm -hmm. on the cruise. So all the speakers get free rooms. Right. I shouldn't say this because Andy is probably a little jealous because I'm going to Australia in November. I'm going next week. <laughs> oh, that, that's fine because if I, <laughs> if, I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I joined that cruise, Leo, my feelings would be hurt because everybody would want to mob you and talk to you no, and I'm... have you entertain them and I'd just be the little wallflower. No, that's so untrue. You're such a star. Oh, stop. Andy played See, the, the ukulele the on stage. And to, to <laughs> roaring applause, thunderous applause. <laughs> uh, maybe it was because you stopped. I'm not saying it was for the ukulele. Perhaps it was for stopping, but nevertheless, thunderous applause. Although, I, although I, I will say that I've got, I have uh, like a, enough frequent flyer miles to get a ticket anywhere in the world on American Airlines. I wow. have to. But then you have to, to fly American that. Airlines. Exactly, but I also also have to like buy that ticket sometime like in the next month, month and a half. So I've been sort of thinking about saying, does anybody want to like get me a hotel room for three days in a place I want to go? I've always oh. wanted to go to New Zealand or Australia or Paris. I have a stripy shirt oh. and a beret, and I could blend maybe, right in. Maybe Clay Isaacson, who's watching us right now in in Lulea, Sweden, could. <laughs> it looks like he might have a nice couch. He could probably look at that. He's got. It looks uh, an old Mac classic there. It looks like it's under glass. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. I'm I'm butchering his name. Here's uh, here's Daniel Schiller. He's watching it from his 70s basement. <laughs> that is so psychedelic. Look at the carpet. That looks like a Holiday Inn I stayed at once. Leo Daniel in Austin, Texas. He's at work. How about how about Marcus Felix? He's watching us in Dubai today. Let's see if we can get this picture from Dubai. <laughs> this turned out to be the best part of the show. I know. Forget the news. Whoa. Whoa. Is he on the train? I guess so. He's listening on the train. Wow. That's Dubai yes. right there. 
The show has gotten him so depressed, he walked into the tracks and he's facing away from the train just waiting for the sweet release of death. Chris just Porter, unplug the headphones. There's too much to live for. Chris Porter's at Schlotzky's having a chicken pesto sandwich. Nice. Hey, Schlotzky's. Schlotzky's. You know Schlotzky's? Yeah, it's an Austin, Texas original. Oh, I'm jealous. It looks good. Weird name. Awesome sandwich. Yeah, he's actually in Lexington, South Carolina. That's probably where it was. Hey, let's talk a little bit about audible.com. Before we go traveling the world again. Maybe he's driving the train watching Mac Break Weekly. He's the train driver in Dubai. That could be what he is. Wow. You should be just keep your eyes on it the tracks. It kind of looks like he is. Saying. I guess you really don't have to keep your eyes on the tracks. You don't have to worry. There's, there's, that train can't go onto your track. It's very high tech. I'm sure that you're just there to make sure that this is Look at all these people tweeting this stuff. It's awesome. Justin Kenyon. We gotta figure out somewhere to make a gallery. G. McCourt Jr. Ooh, Naughty Pine paneling. Love that. Jason's in his home office, Jason Thompson. He's a Suns fan. Is you anybody listening to the show in a hot tub across from their beach volleyball <laughs> playing a husband or wife? So I'm sure that many of us uh, our viewers would like to see that. Get sexy with us. How about this baby? <laughs> you said and the wrong Sam, thing. You know Sam Montooth's baby. <laughs> Is he sleepy? And all of you who are... Yeah, it looks like he's sleeping to us. Oh, he's in a car baby. seat. I but at home. Baby. And, and Sam's watching on his oh, iPad. Such a good baby. Oh, Alex is going to get in trouble. Alex Sorley, he is streaming it on his Galaxy Nexus. Wow, wow, there you jogging. go. Stick it to the man. Speak truth to power. Yeah, I got a Galaxy Nexus and I'm not afraid to jog with... Ooh, somebody's at the gym working out. That's Jared. Jared Janicek. He's got... He's. Notice what's missing. Alex, you're a weightlifter. Ah, uh, he's looking. He's using the thirty-pound weights. That's right. Probably for curls. That's right. This guy's got biceps. Possibly to, arms crossed. Yeah. <laughs> I know that for you audio listeners, you really feel. Oh, that's kind of sexy. Russ Fordyce, nice the calves. Guy's got a dead pig on his. Butt. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh wait, no, that's a dog. Is that a dog? Or, <laughs> it looked like. Doesn't it look like a dead pig? For those of you listening, you just. I don't know what to say. Uh, Your dog is lovely. It's a lovely, <laughs> lovely dog. It's it's just, a lovely it just dog. looks like a dead pig from that angle. Poor DC Techie got stuck in the basement. Excuse me. Do you have my stapler? And, and my ridge stapler? I think this is his office. He's in the basement. This poor guy. It looks like nice Vis Queen on the wall. Nice what? Nice drum. This poor guy, he's sitting on a folding chair. Oh, man. With a 10, it looks like, that looks like a 10-inch MacBook. I hope that's not your workspace. That's all I'm saying. Excuse me. You have my neighbor. And here's another one from uh, Chucky, Chucky, Chuck Jacobson. That's, all right, back to Audible Doc. <laughs> <laughs> this week in ADD. But, you know, I can't because all these people are sending us. I mean, there's hundreds of these. Look at all of these. There's tons of them. Wow. I've just, this Twitter stream is jammed. Russ says, that's not a dead pig. That's Spanky, the French bulldog. Okay, sorry. It looked like a dead pig from that <laughs> angle. It did look like a dead pig. <laughs> And the, the baby is named Katie. She's a girl. Sam doesn't say whether she's actually sleeping. One more picture. This is from Oivin Soli in, ooh, Norway. That's not your picture. No, no, that's my picture. That's my desktop. It's actually Norway, I think. All right. All right. What were we doing? Audible. Audible. Well, we were thinking about it. <laughs> we were threatening. Okay. My personal audio Audible concierge is saying, can you stay with Audible, please? Stop switching away. <laughs> no, you don't need to help me. I know everything there is to know about Audible because I love Audible. That's something new they have, the Audible concierge. How can I help you? Can I find a book for you? They've, 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 uh, their support has gotten better and better since they, I think it might be because they joined Amazon, but they, it's really good support now. I think it's since they made a lot of money because they have all the books. They have 100,000 titles, audiobooks, the best audiobooks. There is no number two, is there, in audiobooks? This no. is it. It's audible as it. Yeah. Uh, talk about owning the market, and there's a good reason. Did you see uh, The Remains of the Day, the movie? If you haven't read the book, I see they've just released uh, Simon Preble, who's wonderful reading. Uh, it's about an English butler in post-war England, and it is a wonderful, wonderful book. I just saw that. See, see, I'm going to add this to my... 
my my wish list. Andy, what are you listening to on Audible these days? Well, uh, I'm revisiting a classic uh, because uh, here in New England, uh, huge sharks have been spotted off the coast of Chatham on Cape Cod because uh, they've been they've been eating seals, <laughs> and so uh, they, unfortunately, they you and I look like seals to sharks. <laughs> well, yeah, well, uh, yeah, my, I have that sort of like aerodynamic sort of shape. Yes, that's true. None of, the, none, none, of, none of those like turbulent turbulence causing like ripples on the front of the chest that, you know, that, that would cut down on my, uh, that would increase uh, water resistance. Um, uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm also sort of uh, plagiarizing myself by mentioning that, yeah, I, 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 I'm not as familiar with the beaches of Chatham on Cape Cod as I am with the Cream and Cone restaurant, a uh, home of immensely good fried clams. They're on the very, very elbow uh, area of, uh, of, of Cape Cod. Uh, but uh, yeah, so, so there, there, there are now beach warnings as of these two more were spotted this morning. They're saying, you know what, we're not going to close the beaches, but if you see seals swimming around, you might not want to be near those seals. You might not want to be look tastier and bigger and plumper. And don't than those splash. Seals. If the shark bites you, just play dead. Just let it. Just let it. You know, it'll 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 get bored. It'll spit you out. That's usually what I, I, happens. I, I heard you supposed, supposed to be fine. Put your fist into its into its into its uh, little you know gills. <laughs> so what what was your book? So, well, I, you you I'm not sure you never guess it. It's uh, Peter Benchley's Jaws, uh, the unabridged version of it. All something like what nine, uh, nearly ten hours of it, uh, available on Audible. Good beach book, good beach reading, good thing to listen to while you're, you know, eating your fried clams at the cream and cone. There is also ice cream at the cream and cone, by the way. So that's uh, it is aptly named. We're gonna uh, need a bigger cone. <laughs> what do you need for your phone? <laughs> <laughs> That's your Roy Scheider impression. <laughs> any, any any Roy Scheider impression, as so long as you like, sort of mash the tip of your nose down like that. You're. I need for your phone. <laughs> well, just great. What are we gonna do now? <laughs> what a great! It's such a good movie, but you know what? The book is really the thing. I see. I am a fan of audiobooks because they're kind of a you know it's in between the printed page and the movie. You're hearing the, all the words that were on the printed page, so you get the full book, but you you hear it, when you hear it, it somehow becomes visual. I know this sounds weird, but a lot of the times I've I've read the book and not seen the movie, and I think I've seen the movie because I've seen the book in my head. And if you, I'll tell you, if you read or listen to, I guess, Peter Benchley's Jaws, oh, it's awesome. And you can play the music in the background. Yes. <laughs> Make it more fun. All right, well, I'll tell you what, you can get this book for free. You can actually get a credit for any of Audible's books, 100,000 strong, by going to audible.com slash MacBreak. That's going to sign you up for that gold account. That's the book a month subscription. Uh, but your first month's free. Your first credit is free. And the book is yours to keep forever. You cancel any time and pay nothing. Um, I think that's a good choice. And then after you read that, you should read The Deep. Another great Peter Benchley novel, right? Or Shark Trouble, True Stories About Sharks and the Sea, also by Peter Benchley. You could really go on and on. Really terrify yourself at the beach. Do you go to the beach, Andy? Yeah, I go at least twice a year. Uh, once to like a nearby beach that's cold and horrible and just but gives me credit for going to the beach. And then I actually do go to uh, a beach on the south shore of, uh, of uh, Cape Cod. I just take the day off. Beautiful, <sighs> like warm water. And again, fried clams. Fried clams, ice cream, <sighs> and pirate-themed <sighs> mini golf. That yes. is a good way to spend a yes. day in New England. Yes. Now here in uh, in Providence we have the uh, we have the uh, clam cakes. You ever have a clam cake? I've had clam cakes often. Yes, they come in a brown paper bag studded with grease spots. <laughs> That's how you know that inside you dump all, you dump you all kinds of vinegar on top. Vinegar, of it. Oh. salt, salt. <laughs> it's so good. Audible.com slash MacBreak. Somebody said in the chat room, oh, do they have Star Wars books? Do they have Star... 147 <laughs> Star Wars... They've got every Star Wars book ever written on in, Audible. In short, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's like every one of them is here. They have a lot of ones that I've never heard of. Yeah. They do have a Star have Wars... Star Wars dra yeah. drama. Yeah. This, this, I think we've recommended it before. This five hours, Mark Hamill, Anthony Daniels, the whole cast... Uh, it's a dramatized audio version of Star Wars. I think this came from a National Public Radio. I think they yeah. did this uh, shortly after the movie came out. So it's episode three. They did a dramatized, condensed version of it. Yeah. 
It's quite good. Hey, Fixer! Fixer! What? Skywalker's here? So what? Don't bother me with small fry. Where's the juice? I'm thirsty. Here, catch one. Don't bother me with small fry. He must be in that bar. What did you want to tell me, Chad? You were holding up four Episode fingers. four, not three. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four. Right. Thank you. You got to keep me honest here. It was the original, the first one, 1977 Star Wars. The Holy Trilogy. The Holy Trilogy. Anyway, uh, this is by way of saying, please sign up for Audible, audible.com slash MacBreak. You will love it. They are having a big sale, and it's July 5th, $5 books. This is just great. Enough. Enough said. Do you want to do an iOS? You, have, you haven't been here so long. We, you haven't done any iOS tips. Do you have an iOS tip? Do you want to do an iOS I tip? Do. do you care? Okay, go ahead. I do. So, um, uh, as we've talked about earlier, I travel a lot. Um, and one of the problems that you end up with is that you get onto these Wi-Fi networks and the, your messages aren't going through because, you know, you're, you're kind of work all, and I don't know if I talked about this one before, but I'm going to try to, I'm going to, it's an important one because I use it all the time. Yeah. So, uh, so essentially what happens is, is that you are constantly in a situation where you're finding that your, your messages through messages are not going through. So, you know, because what the iOS is doing is if you're going iPhone to iPhone, it's going to use the Wi-Fi. But you, what happens is you walk into an airport, you walk into a hotel, and you're being logged into their little thing, and it's waiting for you to go to the website and pay $18. So, you're lo so, so your iPhone thinks that you are now connected to Wi-Fi, and it's trying to send out text message through there, but it's not getting anywhere, and it's not smart enough to know that. So one of the things that's really important is to know that you can go into your messages, go to iMessage, and turn that iMessage off. And I really toggle this all the time. So if I feel like I'm, if I'm traveling a lot, you do want it on because it saves you a lot of money if you're overseas. So it's very important to turn it on when you can. Um, so you turn it on, um, but when you, if you're having, if you find that it's stalling constantly, you know, like iMessages a lot of times when it's doing iPhone to iPhone, little blue box instead of the green box, um, you're gonna find that it's stalling, like just waiting for a long time. It, the, your t SMS will be much, much faster to get to somebody. Oh, that's good. Um, it's just that if you have a limit on your, if you're not unlimited SMS or if you're overseas, it's gonna cost you money. But if you are, um, but the thing to know is that if you're seeing it stall and you feel like the thing's going slow, you can always switch. You can go to messages and switch to iMessage and just turn off iMessage and then it'll go back to SMS. And then it, you know, and, if, and it'll be much, much faster um, sending those back and forth. So Good that's tip. my tip. By the way, Katie is not sleeping. She's enjoying Mac Break Weekly. She's trying to touch your head right now. <laughs> Sam, thank you. <laughs> Our uh, OS 10 tip, Andy and Anaka. I am going to call an audible. I'm going to dispense with the one that I was planning on doing since we're talking about uh, iMessages and messaging in general. Uh, this is a tip for iChat and messaging, uh, the mes new messaging app, which I only discovered about a month and a half, two months ago when I was uh, trying to debug a problem where for some reason it, uh, the, the app would just not connect to uh, to, uh, to any of the iChat servers, servers or the iMessaging servers. Uh, and didn't matter if I quit and restarted it, didn't matter if I killed uh, the helper app that's in visible just did not work and that's when I started digging through uh, support files and I found out that there is a they, there is not an explicit log out of uh, iMessage log out of, uh, of, uh, of iChat uh, uh, button in the in the app but if you do go into preferences go into accounts there is a checkbox next to enable this account for each of the different services that you use if you just uncheck it wait a couple of seconds and then check it again that will log you out and then back in again uh, so what will happen then is that, uh, in my experience at least, seven out of ten times, if for some reason you can't log in, if you just simply uncheck the account, then check it back. You don't have to quit. You don't have to restart. You don't have to do anything like that. It will somehow de-bamboozle itself, and you'll be off and running again. Ah, oh, good tip. It's good to know. And I did mention you can't get messages uh, anymore. If you didn't get it when it was available, downloadable for the beta, you're gonna you're not going to have it on your desktop. But I I think we're going to see... It's going to be this month, right, for, for Mountain Lion? Yeah. 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 Yep. So That's any day now. Maybe by next week we'll be going, the Mountain Lion episode. Uh, yeah, and I'll be saying, I'm going to wait until October. Tom, do you know something? Is that why you leapt into the air? No, he didn't. He just leapt into the air. <laughs> he sat on something. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. He knows nothing. Um, all right, time for our picks of the week. Oh, gosh, we'll look, we'll get all these people watching us now. iTuner99 in his home office. Uh, Dave is watching... It's so hot in Wausau, Wisconsin, he can't even take a picture of it. Here's Robert. <laughs> He's got a nice leather couch. Uh, Mike L., who is Lickle in the uh, chat room. 
It's fun to see people's uh, spaces, isn't it, where they're watching the show? It's us. You know, I always wanted to do this. This is us looking through this, the camera at you in a way, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Uh, Pearson's in England drinking port. Very civilized. Well played. Well played. Nicely done, sir. Uh, Dan DeBrito. That's his <laughs> a lot of papers. Dan, have you heard of the paperless office? It's good, though. He's using the speakers to hold the papers down. They, wouldn't, they won't escape this way. This is taken with a Blackberry from Greg. Thank you. Uh, Stacy's home office. It's very tidy. Yes. Very tidy, Stacy. Nice. I always think that's the way it should be. It's never Nicely the way mine done. is, but it's yeah. the way it should be. And here's another audible lover, James G., listening at work. And we look at that pan, nice panorama. Yeah, that's awesome. There's James and this, his bench. That's a, this is a, this is an engineer. He's an engineer. And uh, let's see. Keeping cool in KCMO Raven. And uh, somebody else. Let's see. Let's I think this back. needs to be kind of a regular little Samson thing we, and me. That we yeah, I love it. Well, I just, I, maybe it's just us. But I just, mm. I, and, and for those of you, and a lot of you, I mean, far more people have tweeted me than I can possibly. And if you're listening to the show, you're now going to have to go watch the show to actually see these yeah. photos. <laughs> so, Alex, your pick of the week, sir. Okay, I've got an iPhone one and a hardware one that I talked okay. about a little bit before. Okay. So the hardware one, I just want to, people always ask, what are you going to use Thunderbolt for? <laughs> It's that. You're going to use it for that. This is one of the things I'm using it for. So what this is, is a Sonnet came out. Now, this is the big version. There's a small version of this that's like half the size that, I, that I'm testing as well. But what this does is this lets you basically take, uh, a, you know, do a Thunderbolt connection. It's got two of them, so you can loop through. Uh, and uh, connect a regular card to your, um, to your Mac uh, and so to, your, to your laptop. And one of the things I've been testing is, is can I get a, a whole bunch of cameras going into Wirecast? And the answer is yes. So this is a Blackmagic, uh, quad, what's called a quad, car, quad card. And uh, what it actually does is let me bring four uncompressed a HD uh, video feeds uh, into this box, which then lets me attach these with one little cable wow. to my laptop. And I was able to cut from camera to camera, streaming out of Wirecast out of a laptop. So when you talk about like mo mobile stuff and what, what people are talking about in this industry, in the industry, uh, you know, the, the media industry, uh, video and, and audio, Thunderbolt is just taken over. So anyway, that's the box is on it and the card is black magic. Anyway, so then the... How much, I, I suppose it's foolish The box is like 700 bucks and... Oh, the, it's one Alex. Yeah, it's, it's, it, that, that's, and that's the big one, I think. So it might be $7.99. And then, and then the smaller one's like five ninety nine. So it's... they're, well, they're reason, reasonable price. The, the card itself is about $1,000, which does the four inputs. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, it's, it's a little pricey for that box, but remember, if the half box works, which we're going to test today, um, you're talking about a little briefcase that you can stream a four camera shoot on location with graphics uh -huh. to YouTube. Anyway, so... Um, um, the, the software, the iOS uh, one, now that we're getting into the political season, uh, I, thought it would be, I thought it was really cool. Someone just, just, this just went up, and this is called Sponsored By. So the, the name of the, the app is called Sponsored By, and what it does is it lets you um, take a look at all the politicians. This is whether they're Republican or Democrat, and you can click on them and uh, find out where all the money came from. <laughs> so, so you can see those little stickers on them of where uh, contributions have uh, been applied to there, and and you can and all the lo the logos for all of the companies who have um, given money to uh, in each each one of these individuals. That's really useful. Um, yeah, Here, so, I can show it. Yeah. Oh, do you have an over the shoulder for uh, Alex? He's looking for one. I can, we can do it on mine. There you go. It's very pretty. Oh, oh there it, it is. Here we go. So, so you it's, it's very, it's very nice. And um, so, what you have here, so we can say like Mitt Romney here, and we can click on this, and so you can see little stickers. <laughs> it's stickers. like a NASCAR uniform on a suit. But what you can do is I can scroll through sponsors. here, and I can go Bank of America, and it'll click in. It'll say Bank of America has contributed three hundred ninety-eight thousand five eight hundred fifty dollars. Wow. You know, and so you need to know this now because the Supreme Court said the corporations have no limits, right, and, on and, what they can donate to campaigns. So right. it is a significant amount compared to what they used to donate. So this is a very valuable, I think. And the big thing is most tool. of this data is something you have to, that is you all publicly it. available, all public, but it's hard yeah. to find. This makes it, you know, very, very easy to find. You right. know, anybody you're interested in, you can drill down into um, all of these, uh, you know, all these politicians. These so are the does major it include politicians. PACs, I think, I think super it has like PACs, a all of that stuff? Yeah, I'm not sure. It has, I guess you can get more. This has all the major politicians that are running, and then I guess you can... You can buy more politicians, so you can follow. <laughs> oh, so I see. So you can, uh, you can, you can. You know, for it's the, nice that they have in-app purchases for politicians now. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a great thing. <laughs> I'd like to buy that vote. You know, they, you know, that's what they really need. What they really need is a Kickstarter for bills. Yeah. 
So anyway, I'd like, no, it's, it's I'd like to pay a, a little extra. So anyway, so politician. Yeah, well, no, the Kickstarter. For so what's the like, name of this? People, um, it's called. Um, uh, it I want is it. called. Sorry, I just lost it here. Uh, sponsored by. It's a buck ninety nine. You know, it's a coffee. Um, and um, I think it's good for at least a little entertainment. But I think it's important because I think one of the things that, that's interesting this year, as I said, is that this is the weirdest political year ever because of the, all of the um, kind of the unleashed. Uh, funding power that right that that has happened in this election. So I think it is more important than almost any other time um, to uh, to at least know, you know, where that money's coming from. And yeah, I don't know if it's not it's not falling super packs. Maybe they will eventually, but I can't because I think they don't have to. There's no rules. It's I, be I imagine that anyway. there are other there are gonna be a lot of these kinds of apps. This is the first one I've seen. Uh, I'm looking here and I don't see any. Yeah, and, this is the I haven't yeah. seen any others that make it easy for you to figure out what's at, what where the money's actually coming from. Yeah. So that's that's uh, all year round uh, contributions, and it's sponsored by, not supported by, but unless someone is sponsored hmm. by, all one word, huh? Sponsored by, I'm going to buy it, yeah. iPhone only. Andy, your pick of the week. My pick is an update to one of my favorite cameras in the world. This is the GoPro HD Hero Two, which was released just a few months ago. But I'm waiting for a very important accessory to be released that they announced uh, alongside it. Um, those you've probably, if you've seen any reality shows on cable, cable, you've seen MythBusters with this strapped to their cars or oh, their yeah. heads. Or Mike Rowe has worn one of these when he's climbing a. 20,000 foot radio tower or whatever. Uh, and they're really wonderful little cameras. They're HD video cameras with a built in battery. Uh, they are uh, also come with this really cool uh, shock proof, waterproof, windproof, dust proof housing. You, you can actually submerge it uh, to something like 20 or 30 feet. It'll work just fine. It takes lots and lots of abuse. The actual camera itself is actually sealed inside this as uh, through this fully gasketed thingy here. Uh, and here is the actual camera itself. Uh, and it shoots. Vi the, what I love about it is that it is so flexible. They decide when they designed this, they didn't decide to make any uh, any guess. They didn't decide to make any any predictions or guesses about what specifically someone would want to use this for. It is for shooting uh, pictures and video uh, in extreme situations for pretty much any purpose. So it will shoot high definition video. This new version shoots 1080p video instead of just 720p. It will also shoot still photos. This new version does uh, uh, 10 megapixel photos instead of just five megapixel photos. The lens itself is super wide angle. So you will get like pretty much like 170 something field uh, degree field of view uh, from, from every single oh, shot. Hey, not, 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 only, not only that, but there's also uh, the, you can, you can activate it yourself by actually, uh, if, you're, if you have it in like photo mode, for instance, you can activate it yourself just by pushing like, this shutter button up at the top there, or you can just set it up for time lapse and we'll shoot up to 10 frames per second uh, for as long as you have storage. This has a, a regular SD card slot uh, in, on the side here. It also can power, you can also power itself uh, from this standard mini USB connector. So you could put a 32 gigabyte card in there, hook it up to like a battery extender and just leave it outside in the yard for like three days and have it shoot like five frames per, per minute and just get pictures of like either all of the animals that make their way through your yard in, in the early morning or the vagrant who might be peeing in your rose bushes. Uh, <laughs> either way, uh, it, you know, it'll be weatherproof. It'll take all those photos you'll, and, and you'll get them there. Um, this also has HDMI out, so you can use it just for as, as a regular uh, video camera. Uh, now, what I love about it is that one of the main things I love about it is that it's also expandable. If you look in the back here, here's like an expansion slot. So what you can do is you can get these little accessory, what they call them backpacks, and just snap them on the back here. And the backpacks also ship with a little extra, like, larger doors so you can still put it inside that waterproof exposure and closure. Uh, one of them is like a battery extender. Another of them is like an actual LCD, uh, color LCD viewfinder. So if you want to actually be able to see, stand behind it and see what you're, what you're shooting while you're shooting it. But they had the, they added this really cool thing for 2012. Uh, that the uh, they call it the the Wi-Fi backpack. So with this special backpack put onto it, this has full communications, video and data via Wi-Fi with nearby devices. So for instance, uh, it comes with this remote. So obviously, if you've got this thing strapped to your head, it's kind of inconvenient to you know, turn it on and off like that and make sure you know that it's actually running. 
uh, this thing will actually you can control the camera via Wi-Fi from this thing. So whether you're uh, whether you've just got it like you're, if you're skydiving, you just have it like sort of tagged right here, or whether you've got it like on the on the uh, railing of the porch outside, and you're just trying to sneakily take pictures of of squirrels as they approach it curiously and look at the peanut butter you've smeared all over the railing. That there you can use it that way too. The doubly cool thing though is that. Uh, there is going to be very soon an iOS app and an Android app so that you can actually use your phone, your iPad as a viewfinder for this device. So you can have this like st stuck pretty much anywhere shooting video, but then you can also have your iPhone. You can actually see live video being transmitted from this camera and you're also controlling it from this remote. Uh, so it really does underscore what I love about it, which is it is there are so many situations in which you would love to get a photo but you have to be physically present in order to make that happen you can't be sitting there for three hours to wait for this thing to happen or you're in this really extreme environment where it's going to be really really difficult to shoot this sort of thing with this uh, camera it's it, if you're if you're out boating with some friends it's very very easy to like stick this uh, to uh, submerge those like three feet underwater and be able to watch like all the fish and everything come out all the sharks coming in to bite at the the chum that you've uh, you've been the uh, it's uh throwing off the side of the, of the hole you can suction cup it to the side of uh, of your car and be used and as a passenger in that car be, be using that be using like your phone to judge when you want to start and stop the camera for like really good action shots and every time you buy this thing it's like 200 the camera itself is about 300 bucks it's discounted a little bit online but for that money you can buy it in three different packages uh and in, in one package it's like it's for like outdoorsy sort of stuff, uh, like riding your bike. Uh, and it comes with like a million different mounts and attachments. So you can figure out a way to attach it to pretty much whatever you want. There's another kit that's pretty much specifically for using it with cars. And it gives you a suction cup mount and other little elbows so you can get it aimed exactly the way you want. And then there's another one that's specifically for water sports. Uh, so in addition to the standard underwater housing, there's a whole bunch of different grips and things uh, to make it to work. So the, the, it's... Uh, the. I've often wondered that uh, how do you recommend like what people buy for a camera? Uh, and if someone told me that they had like a $1,200 budget, I would instinctively say, well, here's a really good like $1,200 camera. Here's the Sony NEX7. That's really, really great. But part of me would say, I would want to talk to them a little bit and then say, well, why don't you get a $700 conventional camera, but also 300 bucks for this really cool, durable, underwater, extreme sports camera. As I guarantee you, there are going to be shots that you're not going to be able to get with like a fragile, conventional SLR style camera. But if you have this little thing and you're going on the cruise and you're kayaking uh, for an expedition for the day with your kids, you will be happily able to get all kinds of photos and all kinds of video with the uh, Hero camera that you can get with anything else. So it's a lot of fun. 200, 300 bucks for the camera. This back, this uh, Wi-Fi backpack is 100 bucks, but both all these things are discounted online. Uh, really, really fun stuff. Some of the most fun stuff uh, I have in my Flickr feed are things I just got from this Hero camera. I'm, and, I'm, I'm looking to get one because I'm going to uh, be going to the Great, Great Barrier Reef when we go down. Yeah. Definitely. And I think it'd be really good for underwater uh, purposes. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think also if you have kids, um, you know, you can actually, it fits into their little hands really well. And, ah. they, and it takes them a little while to figure out how to unlock it. And if you kind of tape that down a little bit, you know, just handing it to them, there's not a lot of damage they can do to the camera. And they go out and have take lots of photos. And, and um, anyway, just case so you GoPro Hero yeah, 2. We reviewed it. amazing. We reviewed it on Before You Buy 26. Brian Burnett, look at this. Yeah. He put it on his uh, motorcycle uh, and uh, compared the Hero to the Hero 2. Uh, he has a very nice bike, and he got great images. And as you can see, they are better. Uh, I think better quality on the Hero too. Really fun, really neat. It, it really is. When, when I was, I, I really wish I had this in China. They make they make, they make like a, a harness. You can actually wear it in the middle of your chest. Uh, and I really wish that I would have had it like when I'm walking better through color. the Forbidden City, not just not shooting video, but just simply take a picture every like 20 seconds, so that even when I'm not thinking that I want to take a picture here, I've got photographic record of where I was and the things that I saw. Uh, and in case you're asking, you can turn off the red recording LED so that people don't know that, okay, yes, I, yes, I look like a fool with this little box in the middle of my chest, but yes, it is taking pictures, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm sorry. With a little work, you could probably I'm make it look like a button. public places. I'm not going to. <laughs> um, yeah, before you buy 26, highly recommend it. I want to mention, uh, look at that. I mean, just some great shots. Yeah. Just some really good stuff. Uh, I want to mention uh, a couple of things in my uh, picks. Uh, I was going to mention uh, just one, but I've got a couple that came up. One is people were asking, what is the Twitter uh, client that you were showing uh, those things on the desktop? And uh, we've talked about, in fact, I think it was uh, Don McAllister who recommended Osphora 
for iPad and uh, iPhone, and now they have a desktop client for Twitter. And you're going to want this, Alex, when you finally get your Retina display, because it, uh, Twitter is not retinized. Maybe it will be by the time you right. get yours. But uh, Osphora is, and it's just a gorgeous, uh, and I think very effective, very functional uh, Twitter app. So I just wanted to mention uh, that it's a couple of bucks in the, um, in the App Store. I highly recommend it. And then there is a deal right now. Um, I know we're all going to get turn-by-turn -turn directions in iOS 6, uh, but the Navigon is offering, because they realize they're going to, frankly, be in a little bit of trouble uh, when <laughs> iOS 6 comes out. I think it's half price. Like It's like 30 bucks for uh, the Navigon, which is a really good turn-by-turn -turn, uh, navigator that has some very cool uh, features, including a cockpit feature uh, that lets you... Uh, well, I, I, you know, I, I'm not in a car, so I don't know, you know how, how I'm going to be able to make it look oh wait, well, i'm sorry i just set the home address you can download maps for the u.s and canada for that price they do have some in-app uh, purchases traffic is 20 bucks uh 3d panoramic view is 10 bucks uh it does by the way use street view and i know you like street view and that's I, not going to be like a part it. of the ios 6 i know and that's a big thing yeah so navigon will add that radar info so you know where the radar guns are <laughs> really and uh nice. it's offline maps by the way so that's that's kind of handy um, anyway, it's a it's a very nice uh, navigator, and the cockpit put bit mode is very cool. But I don't know if I can show it uh, what it will look like. But it shows roll and yaw in your car <laughs> and stuff. And by the way, it's universal, so you buy it for the iPad and you'll get it for the iPhone. That's great, which is which is really nice, and it's done nice on the uh, iPhone. So a couple of the couple the cockpits like four bucks extra. Um, that's called Navigon. And then finally, one other thing, uh, and I thank the chat room uh, for this tip. Mac rumors has a direct link to the messages beta for Lion. Now, Apple you can't hide from... Now, who knows how long this will last, but Apple did pull down the link on its site. But if you uh, go to Mac Rumors and you search for messages beta, um, they have a link. I just downloaded it, and it is, in fact, the link to the beta of messages, if you should want it. It's kind of a little bit funky. Uh, and, of course, we'll get it sometime in the next few weeks. Any predictions as before we go uh, as to when we'll get Mountain Lion? Andy, do you have any inside information? I don't have any inside information, but I'm guessing the last week in July. They'll wait till the last possible minute, huh? I think I think they're gonna there 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 is some prop there are some serious problems that I'm aware of that make me think that ah. it's not gonna be late, but that they're gonna need every day that they right. have. Right. All right. Well, just checking. Alex Lindsay, so nice to have you gonna be here next week too, right? I am. And then uh, off again. Too. I'm actually as soon as I finish the show tonight, next week, I get on a plane <laughs> to London. London. I'm, like I'm just literally just gonna like. There's gonna are be a you car gonna rent outside. an apartment in London, or are you stay in a hotel? I have a flat. Yeah, I was gonna say you might we, as well be there all the time. We have time a flat now. right off of Victoria Station. Oh, yeah, I'm so it's jealous. It's awesome. Are you so, gonna keep it for a little while? We're keeping it for six months, and we're gonna see how it goes. And then, I'll go visit. And we have a lot of we were doing a lot of stuff. And yeah, we, hey Andy, that's perfect. I just thought of it. Andy, you've got yes. all those miles. He's got a flat a, in London. I have a flat in London. Ooh. And you know, from I, London, you can get. You know what? Well. You see, the, the the thing is, if we couch it in terms of we're afraid that it might that hooligans might be breaking in yes. and rampaging, I could help you out by staying there for three to nine <laughs> weeks. If there was just some way that we could have someone take care of that space for us, Andy, That's some way. Do you have a pet well, you need to? <laughs> yeah, if you, exactly. if you can, no, if you can no meet pets. my quote, we'll we'll talk. All right, all right. <laughs> by the way, Clay Isaacson has said us tell, uh, gives us more details. That is a fully functional. 512KE Macintosh from 1986 that we saw sitting there. It's not under glass. It works. A couple more. Here's Matthew at his standing desk in North Carolina. I like the idea of standing desks. I think that's great. Uh, I like the idea of standing desks. I just don't like the idea of standing. Here's what Terry <laughs> Terry, <laughs> Terry the says. I have, to, I have to buy that extra high director's chair in <laughs> order to use this. <laughs> this is Terry's dog Lola, Tampa, a 58-inch Samsung. You look good, Andy, with your GoPro. That's how quickly that these guys are getting these up. Will Kelly is watching Mac Break Weekly uh, from his desk where he has two laptops and an, uh, a screen in the middle and a Star Trek mug. Love it. And here is, from somebody who shall remain nameless, iOS 6 wireless beaming. Allow other iOS devices with iPhoto to beam photos to you. This is something Ooh. you can do on the Samsung Galaxy S3 right. right now if somebody else has a Samsung Galaxy S3. But right. this will work with all iOS uh, devices with nice. iPhoto. Beaming also, the photos. Also also works with iPhoto on iOS. That's a built-in feature. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, here's a guy who sits on a ball. This is Coy <laughs> Wagner. A lot, of, a 
lot of great, nice people watching us. Thank you all for watching the show. I think we're going to have to make a new show. Uh, just people watching us. Uh, I've always desktop. wanted, you know, because when you look at a camera, you're looking into a black hole. I've always right. wanted to know what was on the other side, and now I know. I can see you. I think there's just, I, I just a little we section could, every, every, every time, every, uh, Week, but we just have. A, I think it's this is fun. great. Or, or ever, if, if we ever had a prize to give away, we could use like a we, we could use a uh, like a, a like a let's make a deal sort of thing. Say we have a brand new MacBook Pro for whoever has a desktop <laughs> with with a photo of Kirk Cameron as a desktop picture, three hard boiled eggs on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> and a, and a don't worry be happy t-shirt <laughs> and if you're watching us in the john i don't want to see you but i do see i see rusty and i see john and i see let's see john i see john and i see dave i feel like miss nancy in romper room and i see J look at that but what is this dave is doing something wild there uh and i see, and i see jay hello jay and i see glenn Ah, uh, Stacy says, "Yay! My desk just appeared on MacBreak Weekly, and they said I was tidy." <laughs> <laughs> See hey, that, Ma? <laughs> I am tidy. I'm tidy. I grew up good. You did a good job, Ma. We do this show 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC on Tuesdays. We are so glad you join us live. We'd love it if you do. But you know, we make an on-demand version available, both audio and video, high quality, smaller for mobile devices. Whatever you need, just go to twit.tv slash mbw. You can find it. You can subscribe to it. It's in iTunes. It's everywhere. Please do subscribe because that way we know you're watching and we do appreciate it whenever you uh, watch. Uh, makes a big difference to us. We hate to do this show for nobody, right? Exactly. Thanks to our live studio audience, too. We appreciate your visiting. It's great to have you. Um, coming up, Twit Photo with Catherine Hall. Before you buy 26, if you want to see more on that GoPro 2, uh, at TNT's now, at, I should mention this, at 10 a.m. So if, you just, if you're tuning in and you want to watch TNT this afternoon, Tech News Today has moved. It's before the shows at 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 1700 UTC. So we can get it to you a little bit earlier in the day. We are going to take the day tomorrow off because in the U.S. it's something we know as Independence Day. And uh, Alex is firing up the big green tomato. It's a it's an egg egg. It's a I'm a, I'm a sous vide uh, sous vide uh, tri tip uh, and then That's into the, into the egg. Oh good, at 800 you know, degrees. You know that just 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 as the Green Mountain Boys uh, and as they took to the hills used to grill eggs. <laughs> yes, you know, to sustain them during the long long. You know you're making conflict. you're making fun of this, but I'm telling you the big green egg is the mac of barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> and to uh, Bruce S. who's saying you should have two TNTs a day, we are actually probably going to do a news update in the afternoons. We've been talking about having IAS do a quick news update in case anything breaks. And of course, if there's big breaking news, you can always count on us going to it uh, live and direct with our news team, Tom. We'll be in shorts and a t-shirt. And... We might be. <laughs> you never know. If something big happened tomorrow, I'd rush in. I would too. Sure. I'll be, I'd be eight right blocks here. away. I'd be right here. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Now you get back to work wherever you're sitting. Break time is over. Get back to the beach. <laughs> <laughs>